Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the Most Underrated Podcast. You already know, broadcasting from Most Underrated Studios. I am your man, Thomas the Franchise, the homie Dal Pantonio sitting across from me, JJ Stringstein here at the end of the table. Fellas, what we is are up? Back. We are back. We are Dude, back. what do you know? We are back, fellas. We are back in the cut. And I love this intro because it's just a nice little, little build up to the great, show. You know what this is? Up. Yeah, sweet emotion. Of course. You, let's blow it for everyone, Dal. <laughs> If you're playing along in your car, don't worry. Stop playing along because Dallas just ruined it for you. Yep. <laughs> All right, just kidding. Uh, what up, Dal? That's How gonna you be doing, a, man? That's going to be a great tier. What? Dallas ruining the content <laughs> all the time. Oh, dude, ruining the content on the Patreon tier. I'm so excited. We are actually going. We have the bank account set up. We have the PayPal set up. We have uh, one last hiccup we have to finish today, and then Patreon will be live. So it'll be live on Thursday for you guys. Whoa. Finally, very excited about yeah, it. Yeah. It took forever just to get the tax ID number, to link it with the correct business PayPal, to link it, to set up a business bank account. There was yeah. so much back-end stuff that I didn't really realize. And uh, this whole running your own business stuff is all new to me. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that I have to iron out. There's a lot of things that I have to learn about. Uh, you've had a company before. So you're kind of helping along with that stuff and the business side of things, which is uh, which I appreciate you bet. a ton. So thank you for that, Dal. I'll, I'll you, tell you uh, this. Uh, dude, it's hard to miss two casts. I feel like the world has changed immensely. Dude, like I can't even keep up. So many people were hitting me like, what are you guys going to do? Like this is going to be a four-hour show. Yeah. And I'm like, no, maybe six? no, it's not. Please, no. Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Stringer back there. I can't take that. Come on, you can take it. We're just going songs over songs today. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, dude, so much stuff happened. And that's what I said. I was like, dude, we're just going to have to cut some stuff out. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to try to hit on everything. Let's take some of the stuff that maybe isn't as relevant that happened right at the beginning of the vacations, maybe some stuff that's old. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to keep it fresh. So I think we've done that with the multitude of topics that uh, we've collected today. I know a lot of people were hitting me up asking if we're going to still talk wrestling um, with the AEW pay-per-view and stuff. Not Probably not this episode, man. We're just too packed out. There's just too much stuff going on. That happened right after uh, we did our last show, so it's a little bit older. Right. Um, but I do want to hit on our vacations, our trips, talk about all that stuff. Obviously, UFC two, uh, 239 from the weekend, just Ooh. a knockout fest. So we're going to cover that whole card. We'll get Mueller on the phone. We'll talk to him about that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to go into uh, NBA free agency. Also, on this day in sports history, which will lead us right into NBA history, we'll talk about all that as well. Sick. Maybe some U.S. Uh, soccer, men's and women's, kind of the results. Uh, sneakers and Supreme, obviously. Your YouTube comments as well. Tons of show. Packed out for you. Most underrated podcast. Haven't seen you, fools. JJ, let me start with you, dude. Uh, your nose is looking a little burnt. You weren't putting the zinc oxide on the sunscreen <laughs> yeah, again. Uh, what would you do 4th of July, man? So, 4th of July, I went up to... Uh my friend's place up in Loveland, near Fort Collins. Yeah. Went to uh, Horseshoe Lake. Nice. Been and up there. Just, yeah. Wait, like Horse just, Tooth Lake. No, Horseshoe Horse, Lake. Oh, Horseshoe. What's Horse Tooth? Is Hor- that Estes? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that's Fort Collins. Oh, that so is still Fort Collins. So they're literally so fucking close. All right, okay. Oh, Horseshoe Lake is a more private lake that's in kind of a neighborhood. Whoa. Horse Tooth Lake is a much, much bigger lake. Right. That's, that's the one I've like been to. Canter- that's like some yeah. basic, basic bitch. Even a horse too like cool. I'm on the private shit is what <laughs> you're saying. I feel, I, feel like, I feel like JJ's got friends that we need to be introduced to. This right. fool's always on a boat. My friends are always lake. in low places. He's got friends in high places yeah, all no the doubt. time. Jeez. All the time. It's like, JJ, what'd you say? Oh, we just went on my friend's helicopter. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? All right, cool. <laughs> catered, <laughs> catered lunch. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, actually. Right. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Classic. very blessed to know some like people in high places wow. for sure. But, um, yeah, I just went up there. We went boating for the day, did a lot of tubing. Um, then we saw a fireworks show they put on, and then just after that, shot off, like, $400 worth of illegal Wyoming nice. fireworks, uh, and that Wyoming. was sick. Illegal Wyoming fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Love so, it. yeah, that was awesome. And then, like, later that weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, I went up to Horse Tooth Lake with my family, went boating and camping with them up there for two days, did the same exact thing. But yeah, nice man. Wow. Sounds fun. Got yeah. away. Yeah. Did Had some sh- vacation time. Did you shotgun any beers? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> wow, that's very un-American of you. JJ. I know, man. I was doing a lot of driving, and I'm underage, so I don't think those two things would have mixed that oh, well together. A lot of driving, yeah. But yeah. hey, man, in a month I'll be 21. So wow, look at you. Should we go? Should we do there. the most underrated podcast in Vegas? Take to celebrate to his birthday. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, the most underrated podcast. Out of Vegas. Do you even gamble? 
Uh, no, but the <laughs> ironic part is, is that um, I went on a Vegas trip. I will keep them unnamed for purposes, but uh, yeah, we don't want no I trouble want, here. Uh, tw- tw- I went to Vegas for 24 hours. Literally, we went to shoot, got everything done, went back to this dude's hotel room. Um, we got drunk, we got high, and wow. it was like the most the craziest. How long ago was situation. this? Situation that was like you a were year fourteen. Or two. No, oh, okay. <laughs> just, just saying. Yeah. No, I was like eighteen. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then we had to fly back at one thirty in the morning. Oh my gosh! Oh, so it was like crazy, red eye style. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty yeah. much red eye. The craziest yeah. fucking that is flight of my life. All I all I remember just was the craziest just like flight. Not flashing. The flight. Yeah, <laughs> we're okay. We're we're still go still good. Yeah. We're still getting our. We're still getting our um, bearings back on the show here. Or? I just remember, remember, like uh, just blacking in and out of Dang. just consciousness throughout the flight. It was nuts. And then I, after that, I went home and just slept till I think we got back at like five a.m. and I slept till like four or five in the afternoon. It was bad. Uh, we can't take. We can't. I don't take, know if we should. We, we can't take him to yeah, Vegas. No, it's not gonna live up. I I'm mean, too old. I'm too old for this. I can't do that. Right. He's already had the hangover experience. What are we gonna? <laughs> what are we gonna show him? Gosh, dang. my lord. Yeah. Um, I'm just glad he doesn't have breast implants after that. Right. <laughs> no shit. Sorry. I watched. The, I watched. I, I watched the Hangover Three yesterday. Did you? Yeah. I love yeah. the Someone end of it. Got a, what? In the Hangover yeah. Three? Yeah. Remember, Stu got breast implants. Yeah. Oh shit. I just remember that. Uh, n- never mind. That was the third one. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah so nobody really enough. watches that one. It has John Goodman is the bad guy. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And then, you know, Leslie Doesn't Leslie happen. Chen. Yeah, Good. Leslie Chow. Chow. Le- Chow. Yeah. <laughs> I um I want to peel back the curtain a little bit and say congratulations to my man Stringstein. He's actually uh, pursuing a little bit of a new endeavor. He's still going to be working here on the yeah. show, mm-hmm. but uh, go ahead and tell people about that, man. Before so, we jump into the rest. Um, here. Uh, August twentieth, ironically enough, which is also my birthday. Oh, um, I was gonna. I'm going I was to, wondering why that yeah. was ironic. Okay, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so oh, Al- Alanis I'm, is in the building. Yes, yeah. Alanis in the building. <laughs> um, I'm going to be doing some EMT classes for about six months, so I could kind of build up my skills to later take the physical to become a firefighter, and then also then go into the fire academy to possibly come become a firefighter. Nice. So that's wow. just kind of like nice. Unless the show blows up yeah. uh, before then, of yeah. course. And well, you can for flush our, those dreams down the drain. Cause for you're on the for road. our one per, uh, one percent <laughs> of women or female listeners, JJ just got hotter actually, because of that. Yeah, once he once he actually <laughs> completes these classes and gets the firefighter job, we're going to be releasing a Patreon uh, JJ firefighter calendar. Ooh, <laughs> so you'll be able to yeah, you'll yeah. be able to purchase <laughs> yeah. the Stringstein firefighter calendar. Wow, oh, yeah. um, as he's working at Stock X. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be all over the place. Oh. He's doing a lot Having of things. Six different jobs. Oh my god! He's doing a lot of things. I won't be sleeping for the next year or two. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't have anyone reach out to me with any plugs on getting a job at StockX in Arizona. Ah, so I was dead set on that. I was serious. I was ready to send JJ off to Arizona yeah. to work at StockX. A one-way uh, trip, a one-way plane around. ticket. We had it ready, ready to go, <laughs> already ready, already, and then uh, nobody had any connects. So, <laughs> unfortunately. Huh. But uh, JJ, I do want to give you um, here. Yeah, we'll give you some. We'll give it, you some applause, man. It's because we're that. still waiting for the boost god to hit us up. Because I know he's plugged up. Stock X. <laughs> oh, I know. Right. We're still waiting for his call. He's plugged <laughs> up, Dow. Take that L on the way out. Really? That guy's plugged up. Plugged up. <laughs> nice one, Dow. That does not sound good. It sounds like a toilet at the fair. Yeah. Anyways, uh, your trip, <laughs> Vegas. Oh, Went on your trip. Plugged up at a fair. <laughs> plugged, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I was nice. just at the carnival. I went to. I was Greeley Stampede. I was South Dakota. I Saw was that. weddings. Um, all that stuff. So much. So much trip. So much stuff that we did. Yeah. Uh, what did you do, man? Uh, I didn't do much for the Fourth of July, uh, but so preemptively. Wait, wait, let me break this down. Yeah. You left. We did the last cast on uh, whatever the last Thursday we was here. Not yeah. last week. The week before. Correct. Yeah. We go through the weekend. Sunday, you leave to Vegas. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. When did you guys? When did you guys get back? We got back uh, Wednesday. Oh, so the day before Fourth of July. Day before the Fourth wow. of July. Okay. So we were kind of partied Same. out. You know what I mean? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we uh, we kept it pretty uh, low key at the crib, man, just on that relaxation uh, from Vegas. But uh, yeah, dude, Vegas was dope, man. Uh, it was. It was. Was it good? Was it a re? I know you don't usually go to Vegas, just you and Robin. Yeah. So how was the couple's vacation trip? I guess it was you different. Know, it wasn't any boys. It wasn't a bunch of yeah. nonsense. It was different, and and I, and I miss because like I love having Vegas. A group of people. Vegas to me equals a group of people. Yeah. That's you like just, groups. That's my. I that's, think you like groups in general. I do. No matter where we're at. I love to entertain. I love groups. You'd much I love rather to... be with a group of people at mm-hmm. a concert than one on one or on a trip or on yeah. a restaurant or whatever. Yeah. Right. 
I think it's a vulnerability thing. Hmm. I don't know. Um, Robin and I kind of talked about it because uh, I wouldn't say I'm in the doghouse right now, so don't give me a hard time, JJ. Well, I but, just kind of think it's so weird. You guys have been dating for so long. It's yeah. just like I feel like that would – I guess like if – you guys have been only dating for six months or something like that, and this is your first trip. I could totally see that, but just, like a group thing, yeah. yeah. But like, you well, guys have been dating for so long. Sure, it's sure. Just like, I feel like it should be normal. It should be comfortable. Like you, you should be like, fuck yeah, let's get this shit going. Let's you know, going. I, I think I think you know what for your uh, almost being twenty one. You've got a good head on your shoulders. I think you're absolutely right. I think for me, um, and this is something I don't want to get too personal with it, but I got to let everybody know I'm not in the doghouse right now, but Robin and I have been talking a lot about uh, things and just, uh, you know, moving forward, progression. What does that look like in, in our relationship specifically? What does next steps look like? And it doesn't mean marriage. It doesn't mean any of that. But is is our relationship or, you know, are we as a couple progressing are we moving forward because i think that's key just in any better. relationship are we getting better are we moving forward are we continuing to just get better and uh like i said i wouldn't say i'm in the doghouse right now but is that what this um, trip was about um a little bit that well the trip was about not going with anybody else to ensure that we're you know doing a couple working thing on yourselves and, and, a little yeah, bit yeah and and doing things that we would do as a couple and making choices as a couple versus a group and i'll tell you the stress was a lot less because it's so hard right when you take a group coordinating yeah. everyone, um, it's yeah. like this person wants to do this it's and this group bitch. wants to do this and they're a little lazy and they're a little tired and they're a little wasted or they're yeah. it's hard coordinating that whereas there's just two of us it's just the law of average it's room. so much You're easier right, right next to each other yeah. yeah you're not having to go hotel to hotel because this person's in this hotel yeah. so from that aspect i'll tell you what you know robin planned uh, a lot of this trip so i want to give her a lot of credit on this but um she also kind of reserved a lot of the restaurants and things that we did but at the same time she didn't micromanage it in terms of like have it all planned out because as you guys know i hate that yeah i hate having a regimented schedule like that's just not not what i do and and if you remember me saying that don't forget that real quick um the trip was awesome. Let me let me get into that. Uh, we we went to Prime Bellagio, so that is the restaurant that is actually uh, overlooks the Bellagio, but overlooks the fountains. So we were sitting like literally on the fountains, man. Oh, so tight. it was super sick. It's called Prime Steakhouse. Some of the best steaks, some of the ma best mashed potatoes. We had the regular Yukon mashed potatoes, but then we also had the truffle mash. And a lot of people like that truffle aspect. They were great. Yeah, right. You can't beat old school mashed potatoes, man. So those were super <laughs> bomb. We had uh, grilled asparagus there. Uh, another great restaurant that we went to, Buddy V. You know who Buddy V is, right? No. He's the cake boss. Okay. You ever hear about the cake boss? I've heard the show, never seen it. Oh, yeah. Never, uh, the show's kind of cheesy. It's kind of hokey. A lot of those kind of, you know, reality shows, pretty did pretty you go hokey. To Hell's Chick, uh, Hell's Kitchen. Uh, we've been there before. We didn't do it on this trip. So we, we got some great Italian food, dude. I had the spaghetti bolognese that was nice. just to die for, man. Nice. It was so good. And then we ended up having a, uh, uh, what are those, uh, what's that dessert, man? I can't even think of it now. But uh, they've got like the risotto cheese in it and all that. Cannoli. Cannoli, yeah. Yeah. So we had. Arguably the best cannoli that I have ever had. Where was this at? This was at Buddy V's restaurant in the Venetian or the Palazzo. I'm a cannoli right? guy. Are I know you? cannolis, so I'm going to have to check this out. We, best? we, we gotta got to go. Fact, really? It is the best. And I'll tell you, I've had cannolis in New York. Yeah, We've yeah, had yeah. some of the All best the place, cannolis yeah, anywhere and everywhere. This is hands down. No shit. No question. And they had like this, this like chocolate syrupy yep. Stuff that you just dig into uh, and dip it into. Oh my God, it was just to die for, man. So, some of the best food that I've ever had. That being said, let's get into Jaw Burrito. Oh no, here we go. Jaw Burrito. Oh man. Okay. I don't know what type of music ja you want to cue. I don't, I don't know. know what you want to do. I don't know what I don't know what the reaction's gonna be. Yeah. Do is there need to be any music? I was looking for even a sound, the story but I don't even know what to play. Didn't yeah. even help anyway. I mean, let's go back. I know. So, it's a time machine yeah. here. Let's, let, we're going I told back. You, you gotta try it. We're going way back. You. So let me give me the full details here. Which burrito did you try? Okay. How did it go down? Were you hungry? How Were you many not hungry? Did you, have? did you go tortilla? Did you go seaweed? Uh -huh. Give me the because I didn't do. I told you the go rundown. tortilla. I didn't do seaweed, so I don't know what you did here. See, I don't remember the tortilla talk. So of course, you got to run the cast back. <laughs> We're gonna have to. Yeah. You don't have that. Yeah. Clip. I, can, no, I, I, I do remember him talking about that. Okay, okay. You remember me saying tortilla? Yeah, I because said you can I was get tortilla or seaweed. I yeah, said I didn't try Yeah, because I was seaweed. asking whether it was like right, literally a giant roll yeah. or an actual burrito, and you were like, "Yeah, you could, you could get it either. in either or." Yep, yep, so, exactly. Yep. All right, we did two different uh, burritos, okay, okay, between Robin and I, and we did one with the seaweed wrap, 
because yep. that's traditional. I thought that's yeah. what you got to do, right? That's you go in like here, natural uh, you sushi roll. I've never right? tried that. So how was that, by the way? It was delightful. Wow, it was delightful. What? Yep, it was delightful. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I, know, I was expecting him to be so, like. Wow. So first of all, we had the, the lagoon. The world is whoa, whoa, whoa. right now. <laughs> what we, kind of music do we yeah. queue up? I, we I don't had know. <laughs> just push play on something here, Jesus. <laughs> so you recommended, remember the Laguna, correct? Yes. That was exactly what Robin ordered. Okay. The Laguna, and we of course did the seaweed wrap. So for me, I'm like, okay, cool. So we're going to, tr- we're, we're, we're diving head in, you know, like just deep. We're getting the seaweed wrap. We're getting the, I think that had the uh, eel. They call it uh, unagi, I believe is what it's called, is the yes, eel. Yes, yes. And then yes. they have the uh, uh, shrimp tempura, yep. which is fire. Told you. And then they have this eel sauce and. Uh, the eel sauce is like yeah. kind of like teriyaki sauce, right? In- insanely fire. though better than teriyaki. I t- <laughs> it was delightful. <laughs> Try to tell you that man. was the best. Why part are of you it. so close minded? That was the best part of it. Now, I also was like, all right, man, I got to get a tortilla here. I love Chipotle. I love tortillas like burritos, tortillas. Yeah, 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 That's yeah, yeah, yeah. how this thing goes right in my head. So I'm like, all right, let's get something traditional as well. So we also went with the Waikiki okay. and the Waikiki is the grilled chicken breast. And then the sauce has this like queso. It's like a queso and pico okay. sauce mixed together Dude, that uh, and mango. So good teriyaki oh okay and i'm like that sounds you know what man cool. I'm, I'm into that and then it's got the lettuce the jalapeno the wontons so you guys were hungry yeah you went there hungry ready yeah. to eat that's what i like to hear you didn't just yeah. go there like oh cool well we just ate we'll a couple hours ago this. we, we, we even waited till like 2 2 30 that's what i like to see so you we made sure, we made sure yeah, ready that, that we were hungry i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut off what was uh, and it was and it was brutal because del, uh not del taco but uh <laughs> in and out in and out is like right across the, a yeah. softball yeah, you just spit to the door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Softball, <laughs> under throw, you know, when you're tw- when you're five. Yeah. Okay, across the rate. Yep. And I'm thinking, Robin, pitch, I, I, I'm going to have some of this, but I'd, really like, to, I'd yeah. really like to get a burger after this. Yeah. Okay. I thought the same thing. Who didn't? So she's eating her Laguna, right? And I'm like, all right, babe, it's it's time. It's time to try it. And uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and take a picture of me so we can put it on the gram. Yep. Uh, Oh my God, I took one bite of that. <laughs> World changed. I'm not a foodie, but the texture. Now you are. Dude, the texture, the sauce, the mixes, the yeah. X's and O's yeah. together created. Please don't make love to this burrito. It created. Um, That's why I put on love music, guy. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it created this like. Almost, no one needs to be scarred by yeah, this. Almost going back to when you were a kid and the first time you had a piece of candy. Wow. Dallas. It was so tasty. Dallas, I'm so proud of you. I couldn't believe it. Gosh, I couldn't I've never believe been more it. proud of my friends. And then, so wow. so then I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. I really like it. And Robin, I kept eating, taking bites <laughs> of it. She, she's looking at me like, oh, babe, yeah. what's going on? You know. And then I'm like, all right, cool. The rest is yours. So I took a bite of the Waikiki. Worst thing I've ever had in my life. Wow. The chicken was drab. The huh. tortilla sucked. Yep. There was just no energy yeah. in this burrito. There were, it, it was it was such a letdown right. after you have something as good yeah. and as wild and as just... I mean, because the tempura, I mean, it had a little bit of crunch. You Perfect, have the spices, yeah. you have the yeah. mixes, you have the yeah. lettuce. It's the seaweed. I, I didn't have a problem with the seaweed. Crazy. Yeah, I, I think if, it, I don't even think that would be as good with a tortilla. Huh. Sure be as, it yeah. should be good. I think the seaweed might, puts it over right. the top. No, I can't. Yeah, I can't dispute that. You got to try, try it. You got to yeah. try with the seaweed. I'm next gonna go time. back next time I'm in Vegas. I'm gonna hit the. So now, would I franchise this and do all that that you said? Um, I probably wouldn't. But would I love to see this place in a lot more uh, uh, pla- places in the country? Yes. Yeah, dude. There's not many. Right. There's not many at all. I think there's three locations. That's what I like about it is the fact that it's it's a destination place. It's somewhere, and especially in Denver, dude, here. Yeah. You know how our culture is. You know, dude, we talked about illegal pizza before. We yeah. talked about this could easily grow into an illegal pizza here. It could. You could be a, you to have two, three, four locations. You have one over by DU. Mm-hmm. You have one up in Fort oh Collins by CSU. You Boulder. have one downtown for all the business people there. You get one over in Boulder. Crushing, dude. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? We need to stop the show right now. Let's stop rolling sound. Yeah. And let's start franchising. Cool. <laughs> I was just going to say, let's just make a quick trip to Vegas because, again, it's JJ's birthday right. coming up, and we can have Job Burrito, and we can all just have a great time. I want to have more than Job Burrito, guy. We need to open. I'm telling you, this yeah. is it's really good. It's uh, good, man. I, Especially for you, a guy that doesn't even like sushi. I don't, you're saying it's really good. I don't really like good. California rolls right. that much. Like, right. I would rather eat something else that I really Glad enjoy. Glad you tried the Laguna, too, and that went was The Laguna your, was fire. That's, and that's and just to be able to have a, a, you know, a chicken version of whatever, which was a lot more basic, um, and, and to know just like... 
to prove the point that that was not good. Yeah. It was awesome, man. It was it was cool, man. It's it's nice to be wrong sometimes. It's okay. Yeah. It doesn't hurt, you know? For sure. uh, so that Laguna blew my mind. So uh, I give thumbs up on Job Burrito, man. Nice. For sure. Uh, you know, my I got respect for what that. What was the other one you guys tried? The Laguna, um, the Waikiki, and then... I can't remember. We took a couple bites of it, and it just wasn't wasn't that good. I oh, think okay. It, I think it was something called the Redondo, which so, was like ahi tuna. Okay. Um, you know, and it had salmon yellowtail, so it was more adventurous. I think Robin probably liked it, but for me... I'm with uh, you. Too much. I'm with you. That's why I like the Laguna. You know, Laguna yeah. was the perfect combination of what I needed. And eel kind of, ooh, it's kind of like when you right walk in there, there, you're like, ooh. I don't know about that. The eel know. sauce was straight flames. But it's so sweet. It's so sweet. Man, it's great. It really is. So yep. I was really impressed with that. But uh, aside from that, um, we did a little gambling in Vegas. And oh, uh, I, I lost my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my butthole. There, I, ju- dude, I just couldn't win. There was no way. I played anything from craps to roulette to digital roulette to um, to just regular machines on the penny slot. Robin puts 10 in, wins 50. She puts 20 in, not max bet, not max bet. I'm like, Robin, hit the max bet. She finally hits the max bet, 800 bucks. Oh, wow. Damn. 800? It kept happening like that the wow. whole trip. She goes to Sex and City. She went. She made the most. <laughs> she made the most. The worst mistakes of any gambler, gambler, or what you would call a gambler of all times. Every fancy ass machine, whether it's 007, whether it's Sex in the City, whether it's uh, uh, the Ghostbusters 4D, any of those that are just like, rah, come get me. She got on one money. Wow. Puts five in, doubles it. Puts Crazy. ten in, triples it. Puts four in, quadruples it. Crazy. Couldn't believe it. That's insane. And she you couldn't pro- win anything. No, nah, the whole time. And then she'd get down. Oh, man, she'd get down $200 all of a sudden. Puts another 10 in. 10. So cheap. Puts 10 in. <laughs> not max bet. Not max bet. Not max bet. Robin, put max bet in. Max bet. 150. 200. <laughs> like, damn it. it back. And, dude, check this out. So then uh. so then I was getting frustrated, so I just started walking away from her. Why are you getting mad at, she, at her winning, Dal? That's not good team stuff there. Because we have our separate money. If, all, it, if it was our oh money, my it'd be, it's all about it, mojo, Dal. Oh, you know, dude, gambling more on. than anything is all about mojo. It is. When we walk around and yeah. we're kind of like in a da 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 mood, and we hit a roulette, we're getting killed. Yeah, we're in a good mood at the craps table. We're having a good time at the roulette table. We're hitting, bro. Yeah, it's all about mojo, <laughs> and that, that's why when I, if I feel the mojo start shifting at a craps table, I'll, I gotta go. Me, I'm cashing out. I gotta go. Give me my stuff. I gotta, I gotta roll out. Yeah. If I just feel same thing with blackjack. If I feel the tide turning at a table or at a whatever. Yeah, I'm out of here. Slots. Sometimes I'll ride it out a little more, and I guess it's fifty fifty. I've had really good situations where I'm like, man, why did I do that? Or really good situations where I'm like, man, if I wouldn't have played this next four hands, yeah, I wouldn't have won eight hundred dollars. But then I've had situations where like, man, I could have saved myself two hundred by not <laughs> playing those extra twenty two yeah. spins. Totally. You know, like so. Uh, slots. It's fifty fifty. But yeah. tables. I always once the mojo dies, I'm out. I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. So then I started walking away from her <laughs> and just trying to play my own games. Cool, you Craig know? David action. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. walk. Oh, good one. Uh, so I started walking away, and then you know I'd come meet back up with her, and I would see the worst shit grin smile <laughs> on her face <laughs> with her ticket like this, like just kind of you know where she doesn't say shit because she doesn't want to she doesn't want to put put anything more on me, you know, and make me feel any worse than I already Drive do. Drive you into the ground. And she and I'm like, so how'd you do? She's like. 180. <laughs> 120. Another 60. <laughs> you're buying, you're like buying dinner. <laughs> Was she not buying dinner anyway? No. Oh, really? I had to pay for no. all the dinners. <laughs> you paid for all the dinners and she's winning 800 bucks? Yeah. You're kidding me. No. Eesh, that's that's yeah. rough, man. No. Sorry, yeah. Dal. You yeah. got killed. Yeah. Well, no wonder you were trying to be a good boyfriend. Well, no wonder you were a little salty about her winning all the money. No wonder you had to walk away. Yeah. I would have had It to definitely do the wasn't same. salty from Job Burrito because it was sweet. Yes. You know what I mean? Very sweet there. So, uh, well, so yeah, man, I just, lost money. You know, well, you're happy is, for her. A I, am, bit. I am happy for her a little bit, I guess. Give kind of. Credit. I mean, give them some fucking credit. I mean, for real. For real. Uh, so, check this out. Uh, one of my favorite things, aside from the things I've mentioned so far, we went and saw the Beatles love show. Oh, I was going to ask if you any concerts, any shows. Wow. Anything. Did you, is that the only show you went to? Well, that was the only show we could afford. Been to it multiple times. <laughs> Super sick, dude. I would see it 350 yeah. more times. I've been to it a ton of times. That show, dude, was so crazy to me because obviously it played some of the Beatles major hits, but all the Beatles songs were hits, right? It's like they're yeah. 
dude, their discography goes so deep, man. And through the wars and through all these pivotal points, it, it, they just changed their styles. And if we look at music today, like Incubus in the 90s yeah. was one of my favorite bands, right? I loved Incubus and I thought they were great. And every album came out. I was like, oh my God, this is so good. Well, now, you know, as bands evolve, you know, some just fall completely off. Some just evolve in a different way that just is not a part of what you want or anything that you right. want to do with. And that was Incubus. Beatles never did that. Mm -hmm. There were things that people probably liked less or liked more. There's no doubt about it. But God damn, everything they touched was just gold, it seemed like. Yeah. And that, there's there are rarity in that fashion. Um songs bird songbirds of all of our generations there's no doubt not just of a generation but to hear these songs and to see this um this dancing and aesthetic so eloquently done to those songs um man it was super impactful I, you know what man we were so close and so this has 360 degree seating right yeah. so there's not a bad seat in the house every seat is a good seat even if you're in the balcony man it's just so cool how it's set up because they have their own theater at the mirage i think it's been there for years right so this theater is built for this show specifically all the cirque du soleil absolutely and, oh oh yeah. is that caesar's i believe I'll, and you after know. The, i was gonna ask about other cirque du soleil's you've been to after this but go oh, ahead yeah. and finish um Oh my God, this was just an, a, a visual experience that just blew my mind. As a matter of fact, because we were only like three rows back and the first two rows is like two seats. Yeah. And then the second row is like four seats. And then our row was like six seats. Oh my God. Before the show started, you know, you have kind of these these characters in there that kind of hype, out, hype up the crowd, you know, and kind of get the crowd ready before the show starts. I have never had anybody be interactive with us as right. audience members. And we were so close that that was happening. Like he was pouring the fake tea, yeah. the steam over, over our heads, like doing all these crazy things. I don't want to get too much on the show, but, um, I felt high and I was not high at wow, that show. Interesting. It was so was intense. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good, well, I, high you know, life, man. it was a good high, but I was a little anxious. Like I didn't know what to expect. Heart, heart was beating, you know, quite quite heavily there for a little bit and i didn't know what to expect and it was just i was kind of on edge because of the things that they were doing they're doing flips over buses mm -hmm. you know and uh all this crazy stuff and i and i gotta tell you when you're at a show like this when you're that close man you you really start following certain characters yeah. around when you're far back it's just you see the, the whole, whole thing. show yeah. but now i you know we're this close i'm focusing in on mm. a few different characters and kind of following them throughout the whole show and that was a little intense um but i will tell you oh my god robin and i were talking about it after the show these are some of the most fit people oh, yeah. on the face in of the Cirque earth du soleil I, in general dude i Cirque saw du soleil some of these chicks had eight packs. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, you know that they were showing ridiculous. And I was like, I was talking to Robin. And I was like, man, what do you think these? You think these? <laughs> you think these characters all sleep together and stuff? I mean, they're at their prime, dude. They look so good, and they are just like so fit and so aesthetically pleasing and this and that. I'm like, like, gods. Oh my god, these people are the most beautiful people on the face of the planet. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. doubt. It was insane, man. So um, it was great to see that and, and just the beautiful people that played these roles, how it's done so well with the music and the ups and downs, the intensity of the show. Um, it offered everything. And there was even some laughs in the show, some, yeah. some comedic uh, performances within the show, man. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I think I've seen so many shows to get into what you were asking. Um, how I've many Cirque du Soleil's? Yeah. I've seen four. That okay. was my fourth. That was your fourth I've one. Seen All eight. in Vegas? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I've seen, uh, and I've seen Blue Man Group, uh, but I've seen Mystere. I've seen O. I've seen The Beatles Love, and... Did you see Ka? Yes, I did see Ka. Ka, Ka was the... Was, Kind of the new kind of medieval and like they're, they're running up on the walls that are sideways and they're flipping back and they're jumping no, back. And I didn't oh, see okay. Ka. I saw Zumanity. Oh. Zumanity is kind of the nudity one yes. where it's uh, where I think you have to be a certain age to yeah, go in there. Yep. But uh, uh, yeah, that one was a little weird. But uh, but I love the Cirque du Soleil shows, dude. They're they're done so well. Like you said, the performers are some of the most wow. fit people in the world. I went to one here in Denver when they came. Did you? And uh, I had tickets from the radio station I used to work at when I was hosting mm -hmm. sports talk and uh I got some tickets and went to that dude. And it was just, that was my very first experience was here in Denver. And, uh, it was incredible. Yeah. And then I went and saw, um, a few shows outside in other cities and it's just been Cirque du Soleil, dude. If you have a chance to go, it's expensive. Yeah. But if you have a chance to go, it's incredible. Oh, they're amazing. It's so, awesome. so well done. So well, I really done. want to see the Michael Jackson one. We tried, but as you know, so, 
uh, going into Vegas, uh, your Sunday through Thursdays are always your best times to go, right? For your cheapest, cheapest flights, yes, cheapest hotel course. deals, all those kind of things. So the problem with that is a lot of shows are usually Wednesday or Thursday through Saturday. So we we missed a lot of shows, and Michael Jackson was one gotcha. that we were gonna t- that we were tossing around. But unfortunately, that was starting their their series the day that we left Mm -hmm. so we weren't able to go to that one so we just decided on the beatles but um there's a little bit of info for you guys and gals out there that are going to shows definitely see a cirque du soleil show they're so great but know that the time that you go there's going to be a lot of shows that are either on vacation not running those certain dates um but uh I can't say enough about that show. It Any great. sneaker stores while you're out there? I know I talked to you yeah. trying to get a size 15 Yeezy, which people are telling me doesn't exist. Yeah, so correct. It goes 14 to oh, 16 shit. to 16. Yep. So I, guess I, I, I even went 16. to 16. Ur- yeah, I even went to Urban Necessities mm-hmm. for you, and uh, they they had to look for about 20 30 minutes because you you talk to one of the uh, one of the reps that are that are there to help you, and then they kind of phone something in with their little electronic device they have, and then that communicates to the warehouse. Warehouse communicates to them. It took about a half hour. To figure out if they wow. had a 15 or not, which was weird. But uh, yeah, obviously they don't. Found that out. Um, I was able to go to one sneaker shop. And the reason we only went to one is because I wasn't feeling sneakers. I buy a lot of sneakers. Right. And um, Wasn't bought, anything really new drop in while you're out there? Nothing super yeah, crazy? I buy a lot of stuff online. And I feel like, you know, if you, you know, no, no shade against 2Js. But he doesn't do the pricing. Right. You know, it's it's his customers that price out the shoes. Right. So for that, you're always going to pay more than what you would on StockX or GOAT. So I'm not At there UN, to buy. You will always pay more yeah. on stock than StockX and yep. Goat because they can take advantage of the flex now. Yeah. I'm in Vegas. I want to flex this tonight yep. at Dre's club or at this sure. club or wherever you're going. You know what I mean? They have that. Plus, um, just going to the store and being able to go in and look at all the shoes. This is yeah. like see it in buying person. a shoe. Yeah. is like, I bought this from UN. Yeah. Like, right. Especially you, if you live in a place like here yeah, where exactly. we don't get to see. And you know it's real and you know there's no issues and, and yeah, it's legit. Exactly. Um, yeah, man, it is. I, and I think a it's lot. A souvenir. Now that StockX and Goat, if you look at this two years ago, I, you had a lot of people buying stuff there too because international people didn't have the StockX and Goat options that we have here. You know, now obviously that's changed and evolved um, to where they can buy and sell. There's still obviously parameters that, you know, that uh, they have to follow. But yeah, that is a flex. It really, really is. I'm in Vegas. I might as well, man. Why not just drop 600 on a shoe? Why not drop 800 on a shoe? I did it all in Vegas, right. you know? Uh, so I get all that. But for me, in the shoe game, as as intense as we are and still having to be budgeters, right. um, you know, with this and, and, and try to be smart with our business model, uh, I just couldn't. But it's great to see the shoe. It's great to see it in person and be like, oh, you know what, man, now I will go ahead and buy that. So there's a lot of different options that a place like UN or consignment shops offer. But uh, I wasn't going to buy anything uh, from there. You think that's where your boy Carl Anthony Towns got his blazers? I don't know. The oh. off the off whiteies, <laughs> the off whiteies, the off whiteies, yeah, <laughs> the off whiteies, the off whiteies. Yeah. Um, but uh, we did go to one shop, and the reason we only went to one is because I didn't want this. I didn't want to get into into trouble, right? I, you know, with the group settings and and making sure that the group is appeased even more than than Robin at times because I'm just trying to manage both sides. I failed in the past. I've done the wrong things, unfortunately. And with this, I didn't want to to have shoes held over my head as well. Like, oh, why did you make this trip about shoes? Why did we have right, to go here? Yeah. Right. So we went to one shop and we went to one shop before I even, uh, and, and before we even went, I called to make sure they had the shoe to make sure they had the size. So, so we weren't wasting, wasting time, time yeah. Money, uh, of Uber, our Vegas time. Yeah. You got it. So we did go to undefeated. I was able to buy this sick neon green undefeated shirt. Nice. And then I was able to get the, which we'll talk about in sneakers. I got the undefeated, uh, new, uh, 1.0 triple black ultra boost. They just had them sitting. They had them sitting. Wow. They had, uh, I think they had eight, eight, uh, eight sizes left. Mm, okay. So, I mean, but you got to think it's undefeated. It's their shoe. So I got to think they had 60 plus pairs. Mm. You know, because they, they, they're going to get a, a one we went to on before. That. Same undefeated. You bet, man. Yep. Off of La Brea or whatever. Yep. yep. Uh, right across the street from Hard Rock. Gotcha. Which is re- yep. really cool. But yeah, man, they were really cool. They treated me very, very Did well. Did you walk in when they opened? Uh, no, no. We uh, we actually, after we went to Jaw Burrito. Oh, okay. Which so it, three in the afternoon? Three in the wow, afternoon. Wow, and still got a pair. Yeah, for sure. And it was, and it was like, what is that? 
four four days after the general yeah. release. That's cr- oh yeah, oh, that's right, oh, that's right. Because wow. they, they released Wasn't that even Friday, day of, right? They, yeah, I think geez. Is but so I you think went, you went late in the afternoon, a few days later. Yeah, for sure. And they were they were. I mean, they're still sitting online. Um, I don't know if full size runs are still sitting, but I know a lot of other uh, boutiques have not released them yet at their store. Um, so I don't know what they're doing with that release yet, and trying to maybe two twenty. Yeah, 220. Oh, Dang, it's dude. it's heavy, dude, for sure. It's a heavy price to pay, but I love black. I love triple blacks. You'll see that they've made some nice changes oh, on really? these from a traditional 1.0. So we'll go over that. But uh, as a whole, man, Vegas was great. I lost my ass with money. Uh, we ate some of the best food that I've ever eaten in my entire life. The show was great. Um, got a pair of sneakers. Also got a pair of shorts. Black pair of undefeated shorts. Um, ended up dropping like 360 there. <laughs> But uh, it was Dang. cool, man. It was cool. I couldn't win at gambling, so I'm going to win at buying stuff. Right, of course. You know what I'm saying? Of that's course. my win. Uh, that's so. cool. But yeah, nice, man, that's man. Uh, that's what I got. It was, And then on the 4th, uh, which was the, the, the following day that we got back, um, you know, we were just kind of tidying things up around the house, um, you know, doing a lot of laundry, that type of stuff. And then that evening, I don't even think we watched fireworks. We, we went out uh, outside of our uh, uh, patio there and kind of watched a few in the backside. Smoke just billowed the skies, man. Here because we had some, uh, we had some really humid, uh, a lot of humidity uh, that day and that evening. So like the cloud cover was really low, so it was keeping all that smoke from all the fireworks. Yeah, uh, you know, in in the skies. So it was really intense outside. But you know, we you know fireworks are cool, man. Um, but it's not huge for me. I don't have to see them. Um, I think it's great, but whatever. Um, but yeah, Rob and I just kind of we binged some TV shows and and uh, called it a night. So That's cool. That was it. Nice, man. I think um, you having the realization and not make the trip about shoes to take a little bit more time with the lady. Like, I think all that stuff is awesome. And to kind of um, put a capper on that with JJ, where he was like, what are you doing? Like, you guys been dating six years. Like, what's yeah. going on? How do you not have this figured out? Whatever. I don't think either side was really into trying to f- fully learn and grow. Or you guys maybe weren't into it at the same time right. before. Maybe one person or one side was like <clears throat> trying to make these changes and trying to see this growth, but the other side wasn't in or vice versa. And now it seems like you're both in a position to where you're like, all right, we need to either, you know, we need to both put everything we can into this to either make it work or know that we gave it our best shot and go our separate ways because it's not going to work. That's what it feels Stop like to me. Would I, is that accurate? I think it's absolutely accurate. And I think, it's, uh, which is great, man. It's, it's, freaking yeah. awesome like it's awesome to be your friend to know you and to know you're going through this journey and you're learning a bunch of shit on the way yeah i'm on a you know an equal journey of my own mm-hmm. uh hitting we're both hitting some of the same roadblocks yeah. we're both doing completely opposite things that i'm dealing with stuff that you have no idea about you're yeah. dealing with stuff that i have no idea sure. about you know and that's what's sure. so cool about it man so um i want to give you a uh adapt yeah. for that and uh say i'm proud of you dude yeah i'm proud of you well it's, and i think good. i think what we're going through right now is um you know, my, uh, my lack of vulnerability, like, I don't like to be vulnerable. I don't think anybody likes to, right? right? It's, it's, it's a hard thing to do, especially being a man. You know, I'm this just going to say that, right? vulnerable, you know? Well, and that's, that's, it's funny that you say that. <laughs> so check this out, man. So we were just talking about it last night. So, uh, you know, not to get too personal, but, uh, you know, I, I, I slept in the guest bedroom last night, mm. you know, her and I, we just couldn't come to a resolution last night. So I didn't feel it right. To, to, to lie next to each other. And that was my opinion, and that's what I did. It wasn't that I was running away. It wasn't that I didn't want to see you. I didn't want to smell your dumb breath. I didn't want to, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know, it's none of that, right? It's 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 nothing evil at all. But it was just like, I don't, I, I didn't feel like I deserved to lie next to her. You know what I mean? And here's why. So vulnerability, we talk about this, and I've told Robin a lot about vulnerability and, and my lack of wanting to be vulnerable and that kind of stuff. So my decision-making, my lack of commitments, um, long-term, short-term, whatever it is, what it comes down to is I don't like to be vulnerable. I don't want to be put in a vulnerable spot. I, I just That's not what I want. And Robin finally is now coming to the realization and she understands that. It's not like I'm telling her, hey, I don't like to be vulnerable. I can't be in a vulnerable spot. So my lack of deciding restaurants, my lack of deciding uh, on going, committing to a trip, committing to a concert, committing to whatever it is, because I want everybody else to be happy, right? And I don't want to set myself up for letting somebody down. She's really starting to understand that now. What do we do with it? How do we get some tools to get past it and deal with it? I think is where we're at now. But I think the the age old question, should we stay together or not, or can we be together or not, 
really stems around that vulnerability. And the only thing I'm doing in life right now, so I thought about, you know, eventually leaving, you know, my job and trying to do this full time. We've talked about that. Well, I haven't done that yet because obviously there's not a lot of money happening. So it's not even a case of vulnerability. It's a case of, is it a smart decision for me in my lifestyle and the bills and the things that I have, the savings that I have or don't have or whatever, it just doesn't make business sense for me. That's all. That being said, there is some vulnerability with that, right? So the only thing that I am doing in my life right now that allows me a platform to be vulnerable is this cast. Mm. Is this cast. I don't make decisions. It's like dipping your toe into it too. Absolutely. I do. Yeah. Because you're not by yourself. You're not fully. I'm still with somebody. I still have a group. Right. right? Um, So I find that really interesting. And Robin's really kind of putting these things together. Finally, it's taken her a long time. No shot at her on this. I think it's just. For her to believe it, for her to kind of actually see it, feel it, and accept it is what's taken her a while. You know, it's like, oh, Dallas just doesn't want to pick a restaurant. Cool, I'll just take the weight. So because of these things, Robin's had to carry a lot of weight with us, with our relationship, with our decision making. Um, If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't go on trips. If it wasn't for her, we wouldn't eat nice dinners, shitty dinners, fancy dinners. We We wouldn't eat. A lot of these things... Because I don't want to make a decision Mm. that would say, that would put her in a spot where I'm not happy with this. When we look at love languages, that's not what, you know, if you look at my love languages where it's, uh, where it's uh, acts of service. So I want to do all these different things and it's not because I want to make up for my shortcomings, but I want to do what I'm good at. Right. So last night when she was out with her lady, she had a ladies night and they went and got some, uh, some tacos at, uh, Los Gringos, I think is what it's called over there at Bellevue station. But, uh. Los Chingones actually is where it's called, but uh, she came home to the cleanest house that she's seen probably in two months. Were you guys in a little rift before she went out? Not really. We just weren't talking. Oh, okay. Right. When did this um, happen? When did this start? When you got back? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess you've been back from well, Vegas. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Fourth so it happened, uh, you know, kind of the 4th of July evening uh, into the next day. So the 5th. Friday. Um, so okay. that Friday, because I've been with her night and day. I've been with her at her at her side. You know, and without communicating properly, I didn't say, hey, babe, I need a little bit of break need from a little you. time, yeah I, yeah. I need to get back into my own old situation. Yeah. I need to get back into my research. I need to get Routine. back into my own processes, yep. routines. You know, what I'm doing, I need to prepare for this next week because I don't work from home. You know, I got I, you know, I got things I got to do. And in this cast, we, we're two episodes behind now. Right. I want to make sure that I'm putting enough work into that for these two fools. And uh, instead of saying that, I just kind of thought, I assumed that she would understand uh. that we have been together. Yeah, yeah like true. neck and neck and uh, like god damn we all deserve a break right she felt that separation she was like oh this is so good this is everything i've wanted and, and then, then you go back to like and it's interesting know, yeah. how it happens because she Crazy. gets she gets very very anxious when she starts to feel that disconnect mm-hmm. the anxiety and ramps i think this is bit. i think this is very very people. common yeah it's people I think it's very sure. very common so yep. her anxiety mm. just ramps up and just through the roof and she's like oh my god what did i do what did i think what happened yeah, it's where changed. did it go wrong what yeah. happened where's the communication yep. all of a sudden everything is broken in her eyes and for me i'm like huh it's, <laughs> it's nice to have a break so like we're totally at different spectrums right right, right. and and that's where these things come oh, from so man. you know so literally she comes up to me and finally says look i'm not mad at you you didn't do anything wrong She's like, I am very, very sad. I'm understanding the reasons why these things happen. Mm -hmm. I'm understanding. I'm accepting it. I'm realizing it. I'm seeing it firsthand and I'm not looking, you know, I'm I'm not looking at it with blinders on my, my eyes anymore. And then she starts, so then she starts looking at all my relationships, whether they've been great, whether they've been failed in the past. Mm -hmm. And then she knows a lot about my parents and how I was raised. And that's and, stu- dude, and, this stuff is super uncomfortable when you're in a is, relationship. But this is what, these are necessary evils to get to that next thing. Yeah. And I've had to do the same thing. Dude. I've had to step in yeah. so much dog shit you that I deal. didn't want to, <laughs> to get to the next step. Yeah. Like we both, ha- like it's not easy, dude. It's and hard. Once you decide to make that decision in a relationship, it's, you feel the, you feel the uh, gravity of the decision, but you also feel just how different 
things are and you are with that person. Like you just feel how things have shifted. You feel yeah. there's a little bit of a shift going on there. Mm-hmm. And necessary things have to happen, good and bad, in order for you to grow, in order for you to realize these things, in order for you to see these without blinders. Yeah. Whatever it may be, whether it's the counseling, whether it's the, a trip, whether it's going on a walk with the dogs, what it could be anything. And all of a sudden it just clicks for you. Yeah. But it's not, we oftentimes want to force that click. Yeah. It does, it just it doesn't just happen. It's yep. something that you have to put yourself in a position to make it happen. It's kind of like, you know, oh, he's so lucky. He knew so-and-so and he got this job or whatever. He probably put himself in that position to know that person to make that happen for the and to make that connection. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like kind of like what we are doing with this show. Yeah. If we got a radio show out of this, we've been putting it, busting our asses every week, putting out two and a half hour episodes, two episodes every single week. It yeah. didn't just happen. We right. didn't just get lucky. We've been busting our dick over here trying to make it happen. So that's what I love about this is I've, I see the work. Mm-hmm. I constantly see you guys trying different shit, trying to fit square pegs and round holes all, all over the, the place. Time. And then finally when it clicks, it's like, an aha moment. And yeah. it's so good to see, dude, mm-hmm. because I think if you're in a serious relationship, you're going to have to step in that shit in order for this click to happen. Right. And I think a lot of times people bail on relationships before they even let that click mm-hmm. or let, or try to pursue that. Sure. And it may happen quickly in a relationship for you. Cause you may be at that point in your life. It may not, it may happen. It may take six years because you just weren't at that point in your life and you weren't ready yet. Right. But it's all different for everybody, man. Yeah. And I'm super proud that it's happening for you. It's just so easy to hide, exactly. you know, in, in so many different facets, yeah. right? Like that's why I like the groups. That's why I like having a group because usually in a group, I can just kind of lay back and chill a little bit and let everybody else decide. And I'll find something that I like within that decision, whether it's food, whether it's right. the entertainment, I'll find something. Don't worry about me. Okay. I'm my old man, dog. But in a relationship, it's not possible. And Damn it, man, it's so hard to be on a team because you're trusting that person just as much as that person's trusting you. And that creates vulnerability. Dude. Yeah. And man, dude, I, I just I keep telling myself, like, dog, you're not you're not wired to be in a relationship. You're just you just you're just not. And it's not that you're a turd. It's not that you're cheating. It's not that dude, I don't look at anybody. I've never looked at anybody. And if we did, Robin and I looked at the Cirque du Soleil crew together. Right, and thinking, right, right. Holy shit. Yeah. We're jealous. Yeah. What's going on? We're here? jealous of the we eight pack abs. Crunches, yeah. <laughs> you know, get, get our oh, workout on. Robin, you trying to work out after the show? No. Okay. Me neither. Squats in the bedroom. <laughs> yeah, Hold power, my legs, babe. Yeah. Power squats. <laughs> <laughs> power no squats. Doubt. But, uh, but yeah, that's kind of what we're dealing with, man. And, uh, you know, some of our viewers are going to appreciate this. Some of our, not but, uh, I'm, I'm chasing vulnerability and, and how to get past that. You know, it's not even about Robin at this point. She can only do so much. So her, obviously, her her uh, answers are, well, babe, do you want to get back into counseling? Do you want to? Because we stopped for a little while. We were doing really, really good. And we had been doing it for about a year and a half. And, you know, we found ourselves just not getting any more out of it. We almost go into our counselor just to vibe out with the counselor right. because we liked her and cared about her so much that she cared about us. Uh, but now it's it's a point where, you know, Robin's trying to offer some solutions. And, and I think that's kind of where we're at with this is like, cool now you're starting to accept it now you're starting to see it now you're not forcing it now it's something that you're processing which takes a while right to process this and just you know trace the lineage of was it your parents was it your dad was it you know because that's how my parents were not to get too much into it but instead of dealing with stuff dad went out to the garage mom just stayed mad you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't get to see a lot of how this is fixed how things are talked through now I don't have to be like them I don't make that choice But it is ingrained in you. And then if you have a couple relationships where, you know, one's dominant, the other one's not, you take second base. I mean, shit, I raised a kid that wasn't mine for almost 10 years, you know, so I took second stage no matter what. Okay. What I need, my needs, what I wanted always came last and not their fault. My fault for staying in it. Mm -hmm. My fault for trying to make something work. But I was in love with that little girl, you know, and I put so much work into it and I was good at it and I didn't want to leave. But learned a lot of bad habits, dealt with a lot of bad things, and then went to a relationship after that that was all lustful because I was like, well, let me just take all of this. Let me get everything that I wanted, you know? Well, because you weren't getting that before. Yeah, exactly. But that was long distance. Right, of course. So guess what? Yeah. No vulnerability. Not at all. None. No. No. So now Robin's seeing this. Now not only does she see it and and how we deal with it or the lack thereof, but she's also kind of tracing the lineages and trying to make it make sense, and that's what's brought it to a head, and that's what's making it all make sense. Now it's like, 
you know, at time at time to start start talking through decisions mm-hmm. and 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 commitments through that yep. as well. So it's it's hard, man. It's hard, but that's that's kind of where I'm at. But the thing I the thing I um, want to make sure that you guys are both looking at is you guys have been through a lot of stuff on your own, and you guys are the people you are today because of that stuff. You know, mm-hmm. you don't. I don't want anyone to take this as like you need to throw out the things that your partner did in pre- past relationships or bad because they all got you here to where you are. Right? Are you willing to move forward with this person? Are you willing to make the necessary changes and compromises that are mm-hmm. going to make this current? relationship yeah. work but it shouldn't be shots from the past it shouldn't be bringing up old shit to take shots at right. people or make it those negative because those got yeah. you to who you are now yeah as long as you learned lessons from things and you sure uh went along things even if you didn't learn lessons i guess if something happened you learned a lesson along yeah. the way good or bad but those were um instances that made you who you are sure today and i don't and think we should ever really forget that or try right. to shame people for that shit because it's like the past is the past. We can't change the past. Sure. We can acknowledge the past. But I think in a lot of instances, we can probably look at some some crappy stuff we did in the past or yeah. some things that happened to us in the past from our parents or whatever, and we can take good from it. Mm-hmm. We can take, oh, well, you know, maybe this is why I'm here, though. This is how I got to this stage from this, you right. know, this happened and this directly affected that or whatever. Sure. So I think that's something good to keep in mind. Um, and shouts to Robin because she doesn't put me down for any of that. Right. But, but she's allowing it to make it make sense to her and not hang it over my head. Love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. But I'm also thinking like, okay, cool. So we do all this and, you know, this might be a little bit too <laughs> too personal. But then I'm thinking like, okay, so we do all this. And, and then I'm like, but Robin, do you really like me? Do you really like who I Dang. am and what I bring? Um, so I, I, I threw that question out there because, you know, I, I asked, you know, I'd have her ask the same question for me as well, because as the time, so it's been between six and seven years is how long we've been together. And now it comes a time is like you, you work through all these things and you make decisions and we run a great business together, but that's not all there is to it. Right? Like, do I want to hang out with her most of the time? Does she want to hang out with me most of the time? The answer could be yes. And it could be no. Depending because, on what because, you guys are doing. Because what we're into is quite different. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, she doesn't like sports. Doesn't give a shit about sports. Yeah. That's all I understand. That's, dude, the basis of my life and how I how I understand life is through sports. Same. It's like sports lessons, okay? You fall when you're out there, you get your ass back up, and you, and you, and you take third place instead of second place, but the next year you come back and you try to get first place, and right. here's how you do it. It's not that way. Those building blocks and those fundament, those fundamental blocks are not the same. So what we do, what we like, she wants to wake up in the morning, take a run. Yeah, right. In the morning, <laughs> I wake up, I got the runs. <laughs> right, okay? take a shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. <laughs> right. You know, on the weekends, she wants to go hiking and biking. Yeah. And I'm like, yep, that's that. Nope. She wants no, to do no that. Thanks. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know she you know, was trying to do all that on the weekend. But the food stuff we get along with. I hated food. I hate like I was. I was a basic bitch for so long. And now you know I'm like shit. Yeah, let's go to that restaurant. Let's give it a shot. Fuck, let's go to Job Burrito. You know? Okay, I'm open to that. But we're different, man. She's into fitness. I'm. I want to get fit, but I don't want to do the things she's doing. Right. She's going to the craziest gym. She's doing whatever she wants. Like She's fitness making the sacrifices. Wise, you want to be fit. You don't want to make the sacrifices. Yeah, all right. yoga all day. Yoga this, holistic this, you know, organic everything. No killing animals. Like, bless her heart, dude. She has, she's one of the greatest. Right. She has got such a great head on her shoulders. But we're so different. Mm-hmm. We're stupid different. And opposites can attract, and I get that. Right. But does that mean that you want to hang out with the opposite of you all the time? No, 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 not all the time. Right? No. So I want to sure. hang out. I want to hang out with that. I want to hang out with that opposite here and there, but yeah. not all the time. I can't. No one can do. It's balanced, dog. It's right? just like we talk about on this show. It's a balance of everything. If if a lot of if we were more in the middle on more things, I think we'd all be a lot more a lot nicer to each other. We'd all agree a lot more. Mm-hmm. We'd all understand each other a lot more because there'd be more balance. You don't have to be all the way to this side. You don't have to be all the way to this side. Just right. try to find more of a middle ground in more things that you do, and you'll be a lot happier, man. Like. May, maybe not making everything all sports all the time, finding mm-hmm. a little bit of balance, finding a little bit of whatever, yeah. uh, being able to, do you care if she watches sports with you? I'd like her to, you'd like her to, right? That'd be so sick. that would be a compromise. Hey babe, I'll go work out with you over here. I'll go, I'll go come walk the trails of red rocks with you or I'll come hit the whatever, uh, certain stuff. I'm not saying you have to go to every yoga class, whatever. Cause she needs things that need to be hers too. Yeah. Without you involved. Like golfing is mine. Right. Yeah. But where the compromise compromises can come in. She's like, babe, I was thinking about taking this little two mile hike. Maybe we can take the dogs up there, go on a little walk or whatever on a Sunday. Shit. 
Cool. Sounds good. You fulfill that obligation. Now you can go home and watch the finals or you can go watch a game. It's like, babe, I'm going to sit down and watch the game. You want to sit down and watch the game to me? She's maybe more likely to do that or more likely to see because you got out of the house. You went on the little hike. You took her with the dogs. You filled up the love tank there. And now she's able to do something similar in that aspect with you. If you want her to, not or, to say that. You or you them. did this and they're like, oh my God, they did that. Can I push him further? Can I get him to do more? Can I get him to do more? Let's do more, more, more. I feel like that's what you get. I feel like that could be a possibility and I wouldn't put that on Robin necessarily, but I feel like if I just keep bending over backwards and I, maybe I shouldn't say it as bad as that, but if I keep doing that, like then all of a sudden people can be like, well, he's obviously taken an interest in that versus in me. And I think that's a, that's a fine line to walk. Does that make sense? Take it, like, say it again, taking an interest in, in me uh, versus in that. I feel like if I did that, like say, say I even did it weekly, right? Hey, I'll go on a hike with you. Maybe it's only for an hour. Maybe it's for two hours. That's my max. But if I can ask you to watch a game or something with me, there's a fine line between uh, doing it for somebody or them being fooled to think that, oh, this person's starting to be into it. Mm. This person's starting to take a liking to it. Because I can play the game. I can go to I can go on a hike and be like and act like it's the best thing ever. And all of a sudden I've got that person fooled, but I've also got their tank full as well. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think if it's That's a situation well, here's the situation too. If she absolutely just has no interest in wanting to watch sports or liking sports or anything, it's gonna be miserable anyway. So in a situation like that, it's like, why don't you guys just both do your own thing? And right. then do the things that you enjoy together. Yeah. Do the things separately that you don't enjoy together, that you enjoy separately, yeah. and call it a night. Like it doesn't need to be really more complicated than that. I yeah. don't think. And that, I, I don't. You're talking about weekly. Hell no. I'm not saying weekly. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally. saying occasionally. I just threw that. Out yeah, there, yeah. I'm, I'm saying I don't. I'm not saying make it routine. I'm saying right. occasionally it's not bad to just say yeah. Hey, we go. I'll go on the hike with you. I'll go do the whatever. You know what I mean? Just to make her feel good, mm -hmm. make her feel like she's supported, make you feel like you do take an interest in her stuff whether it's just asking about it, whether it's going on it, but not weekly, not even monthly, like just an occasional mm -hmm. thing. But for the most part, you guys do your own separate thing. Yeah. You know, like as far as the stuff you do separately. But I think we've done that for so long now. I think that's why we feel like we run a, a great business together, mm. but not a great relationship because there, again, there's a fine line with that as well. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, like I never see that person. She never sees me. Then, you know, secretly somebody or some buddies can be building resentment and not even know. Damn, right. um, so there's that too, you know. Mm. But uh, it's 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 finicky. It's fine line. It's 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 very hard, is what it is. I right? Mean, relationships are hard. Oh, we and we said all the time. Dude, relationships are insane. The way it is. You're trying to bring two separate lives together. Yeah. Two people that are the opposite sex. Well, most you know for yeah. us anyway. For us, yeah. Uh, the opposite sex. They're they're um, working jobs. You're doing outside, you know, podcasts and outside ventures. Mm -hmm. You're doing. Uh, you're trying to bring two people that were raised completely differently by parents that never met each other, that never know each other, don't know anything about each other's lifestyle, mm -hmm. background, race, religion, creed, whatever. You're trying to bring these two lives together to create a partnership and a family yeah. and team. And that's same thing, dude. I base a lot of stuff in my relationships off of sports. So it's mm -hmm. often a lot of talk of team, yeah. get back on the horse. Let's not take the L. Let's da, 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 da. You know, like it's a lot of team stuff. And at first, yes, yeah, she didn't. My girl too, not big into sports, didn't really understand, like not, you know, was mm -hmm. just not on board with that. And as we've moved on and as she's, um, ever was, we've, you know, become incredible friends before relationship or anything else, just friends, just knowing each other more and moving forward. It's easier for her to see why I am the way I am with sports, why I am the way I am with team, what these building blocks mean, how things work out. Um, and we've talked so much about sports is the greatest reality show on TV. Absolutely. It's probably the last great reality that we have that nobody really messes with. And I mean, if you want to get down to semantics, you could say people mess with it or whatever referees, whatever. But we watch sports because it feels like the last great thing that we have to watch live. Right. Other than that, it's so dude, I was trying to watch the UFC fights Sunday night and just not trying to, which is last night, try not to see all this stuff from Saturday uh, all the highlights on Twitter, all the stuff there, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, really difficult. So the love of sports, I don't think is something that, well, your love of anything is something you guys should never give up. Right. You know, and to speak a little bit about my trip, vulnerability, you're talking about, dude, we, we road tripped it out to South Dakota for a wedding. 
super, super sick. Probably one of the funnest trips, if not one of, yeah, one of the funnest trips I've ever been on in my life, man. And um, just having my girl there with me, just being able to laugh, being able to explore the open road, drive around. Dude, talk about vulnerability. You're driving down a two-lane highway in the middle of nowhere with no cell phone service. Mm. Something happens, yeah. you have each other. That's it. Yeah, You can rely on each other to get out of that situation. That's it. So if you're looking at that person across the car and you're not feeling confident that that person's going to help you stay alive or get you out of that situation or be able to get you to the next town or whatever. Could be in trouble. You could be in trouble. That's a difficult thing, dude. Yeah. And I didn't think about that at all before the trip. And as I'm driving, we're going rolling through, like I said, bumfuck South Dakota, nowhere in <laughs> Wyoming, Nebraska. I don't even know where we are, dog. Yeah. Like at some of these points, you break down, something happens. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've had the gas tank full, so we weren't going to run out of gas, but something happens out there. No cell phone service. Gas tank full, love tank full. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're you're ready to go. See, that's the thing. Robert or and I can do trouble. that though, because man, we can run a hell of a business. Right. That's a business partnership. Yep. You know, but instead of like, listen, her cracking chips, cracking pistachios, that kind of stuff on the trip. Could I deal with that? You I guys are so weird. Her with the screeching of the tire or the screeching of shoes on a basketball court for the reason she can't watch games. <laughs> yeah. You with her crack and chip. These are two things that I never noticed in my life. Really? Never noticed until. Yeah, well, I'll tell you why I did. Dude, my dad gave my mom a hell of a time. Right. Oh, my exactly. dad. Exactly. He comes back. My dad would yell at my mom. Judy, what are you doing? Chewing the gum. You're popping that gum. I'll tell you what. Damn. That's uh, crazy. It was like a wrestling promo. <laughs> Serious? Yeah, never. I never. If you steep chewing that bubble gum, I swear to God, I will come over there and DDT you right off the ropes, and I will not take this anymore. And you get the hell out of here. How oh, did you I, guys can see how, how red his face. How was. did I do? If you're not watching on YouTube. Pretty, I do pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I a felt constipated. Couple little stumbles, but it was good. I, I know, mean, man. I I get, it's hard to freestyle a little bit like that. I didn't shots. watch a lot of wrestling. That was a great freestyle you know? promo. Yeah. Um. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, Thanks, so I never, JJ. I never experienced that. Hey, JJ, was it pretty good? It was all right. It was pretty awesome. Nice. It was pretty awesome. Wow. Nice. The goat. The enthusiasm. I, you know what? I'm going to give him the goat. Okay. <laughs> I never Whoa. grew up. Uh, I never grew up with wrestling, so I really can't tell. But <laughs> hey, since you're <laughs> the goat, real quick, you know, because Chai's and I have been uh, talking a lot about shit. You have anything to add to this uh, relationship stuff? Any, no, I'm just does the goat have in. anything to say? I'm just taking it in at this point because, like everyone, I fucked up in relationships. There's sure. a lot of shit I wish I could take back, and that's just with general life too. Because, like, I guess this is gonna get a bit deeper, but um, I don't know if you know. I know franchise knows, but I lost my mom when I was in ninth grade in high oh, school. No doubt. So that hit me hugely, and sure. there's like. Just with that, just losing people, it's just like there's a lot of regrets. There's a lot of things I wish I could change, but it's just the whole idea is you just got to keep moving because if you don't, you'll become stagnant and you'll get into a hole that you'll never be able to get out of. And it's just, it's a bad mindset to be in. And it's just, it goes with everything relationships with different people, whether that's like, you're dating, you're getting married, it's your mom, your dad, your brother, like anything like that. It's just, you can't, yeah, you can't hold grudges. You can't, you always got to continue to get better because you don't know when you're going to lose that person and then yeah. end up having the regrets of losing totally. that person or never getting the chance to get with that person. That's why I'm so big on resolving like, and resolutions yeah. and finding solutions. Because not holding just something to the yeah, next day. Exactly. Or, not holding something to the next day, the next two days, the next week or whatever. Cause I want to get that open communication. Right. I want to get what's bothering you <laughs> out. What's bothering me out. And how can we come together and be able to move forward? I see you. I want you to see me and I want to see you and I want us to see each other's thing. And I want us to be able to get over that. Right. And I want us yeah. to be able to get over that hump together. Not, Hey, I'm already over the hump. Come on, pick up your shit and get yeah. along. Like get it together. Yeah. I don't want to be like that. I don't want her to be like that yeah. to me. I want us to be getting over the hump together, moving forward in a situation or uh, in a resolution that we both feel comfortable with, that makes sense for both of us, and we feel good about it. And we can look at each other and say, hey, I feel really good about that moving forward. And for the most part, that's we've been able to do that. I mean, we haven't had these issues. That's dope. Yeah, it's been, it's been awesome, man. But it's not easy by any means. It's not easy to get there, and it's not easy to do that in the moment. Right. And so sometimes... You need to take a few minutes. You need to take a step back. And that's something I've had to learn because I'm not the guy that takes any steps back. I'm a guy that's like, let's get this handled now. What's mm -hmm. going on? Why aren't totally. we better? Why aren't we solved it? What's the deal? Yeah. I just want to fix it. As yeah. guys, we kind of need fixers. like an in-between almost. 
Yeah, you well, need that time if need be, but you also have to have that urgency to get it done at well, the same you, time. Well, exactly. So my girl needs the time, but she'll take three days if she needs. So that's something that we had to compromise yeah. on. I need immediate. She yeah. needs three days. Well, three days ain't going to be good enough for me. Immediate ain't going to be good enough for you. Yeah. How about we take the day or an afternoon? You know what I mean? And yeah. we can kind of work out whatever, whatever it may be. You know, just kind of let her be. Talk to me when you're ready, babe. Whatever it may be. That being yeah. said, dude, we had the sickest trip. Like the trip was so Is sick. It? The everything was so much fun. We had. I, I don't have it. I wish I had more to add to your conversation because I feel bad because my <laughs> shit's fucking been glowing. Like reviews are glowing over here. Five stars, Rotten Tomatoes. You know what I mean? Like it was just the funnest trip, well, man. It was also had your own shit. Yeah, too, exactly. So it's just like exactly, exactly. It, and it's it's it was one of those things where the trip, dude, was not only was it so much fun. But I would say it brought us even closer together. Like I said, you're sitting in the car driving to South Dakota with that person. Right. That person can't be annoying you. The cracking of the chips, the gum, the pistachio, whatever it may be, can't gotta, really be annoying. Got to put that on hold. The fact that we were able to just cruise it in the new whip, yeah. the sunroof open, windows down, nobody else in sight, yeah. country road. Sounds like a Florida Georgia line. Oh, uh, dude. Yeah. It was so sick. So really quickly, so we can get into these topics today, because we, uh, we're blowing the we, show. We went along. We went along. Content's crazy. Um, I knew we were going to have a lot. I knew we were going to have a lot from trips. I knew it was going to be, be a lot of stuff. And I'm always about stuff like this that helps people. I think this brings more value than anything else. You can go to ESPN, you can go to Joe Rogan, you can go to a million people to get opinions on certain topics. Some of the right. topics we're going to be covering on this show, this, what we just opened the show with you, who are you getting that? You know what I mean? Where yeah. are you getting that from an authentic place from two motherfuckers that you, sorry, from two cats that you know, sorry, Ant. yeah, uh, Sorry, Monday Midsol. Monday Midsol. Uh, you know, just where are you getting that from an authentic place? So um, totally. I appreciate you being vulnerable, Dow, yeah. being able to open up about it. At least I can do it on the cast. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt, man. So uh, as far as my trip, yeah, we road tripped it up there, took um, the regular I-25 route through Fort Collins, all yeah. that stuff, Wyoming, everything like that. Uh, so much fun. Went up there. Dude, I did not think I would enjoy Rapid City, South Dakota as much as I did. It was like living in Morrison. Yeah. It was like you were in the mountains. You're right outside the foothills. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just, it was so cool, man. Other than not having legal weed, yeah. that state was, or I guess I don't want to say the state, but that city was so fire, man. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed, I don't know if you guys have been there, but I just really, really enjoyed it. Of um, course I've been there. That's where Sturgis is. Of course. So right. yeah. You've been I've, to Sturgis. I've, I've stayed in Rapid City. I've stayed in a teepee. What did you think of it? I love Rapid City. I thought it was awesome. Um, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of guys in that area because obviously the, the oil fest. the oil rigs yeah. and doing all the that I type wasn't of stuff. really paying so, attention, but so you're, it's kind of a fest. <laughs> yeah, so it's a fest up there. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I love it up there, man. The Black Hills, dude, cruising that and Harley, dude. There's nothing better than that. Well, so it is a nice area. I had friends that went to Black Hills State, and that's all they complained about. I was like, no wonder this place is the highest suicide rate in the country of any college because it's terrible, it's brutal, mm. it's yeah. it's boring, it's whatever. Sure, all dudes. <laughs> Maybe that's because I was on a trip, but I had a black. Dude. It's pretty. Went from uh, did the wedding. Congrats, congrats to my man AP. AP. I'm getting the Yeezys for you, dog. Don't worry, they're going to be coming. I know you listen to the cast. Yeah. Loyal supporter. Um, so congrats to my man AP. They had a great wedding. Beautiful. Uh, AP and LT. Her name's Lauren. She um, she is now LP instead of LT. Sure. So she's LP. LT goes pro was the hashtag for the wedding, which is oh classic. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Pro Oscar was a uh, LT goes pro. Was the hashtag there? So yeah, great time, super super fun. Her family likes to party; they like to have a good time as well. Hmm. Her dad's this crazy Italian guy. It was just fun, dude. So fun. Nice. Uh, great to see my homies, my homies um, Chase and Edgar and Adam and everybody that was up there. All the people that we got to hang out with, uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. We went from the wedding last day. We left uh, left and we went over to um, the Badlands, dude. Really? Have you ever been there? No. That was, did you see that on my story? I did. That was crazy. All the hiking and Hike, all that. Dude, that was crazy. We didn't even do too, a crazy amount of hiking. We just did that little area. Sure. Um, but it was so much fun. It and this beautiful. is a place that I definitely want to load up 15 or 20 pairs of shoes, drive out there and just do an all day photo shoot in that park. Just tons of on feeds, tons of dope drone huh. shots because there's so many cool places within there, dude. Yeah. There's the place we were where you saw us climbing out on the um, kind of, mounds of dirt i guess it is or cliffs it's all dirt dude the whole shit is just red dirt yeah um but it's it's such a cool national park the way they've preserved it the way they made it so you can just drive through it and then we took this two lane scenic route all the way home dude through nebraska down through south dakota through nebraska and then into colorado instead of going back through south dakota and wyoming nice the i-25 route we went 
76 and that scenic route all the way where it meets up to 85. And we took it, we took it that way home. So it was like taking two totally different drives, which That's was cool. awesome, dude. So can't say enough about the trip. Had a blast. Walk, rocked the blazers with the suit at the wedding. Yeah. Uh, saw if you if you follow me on IG at OMG, it's TTF. You got to see all that. Got to see the behind the scenes stuff there. Looked pretty sick fit. Yeah, man. It was, it was fun. So I, I really enjoyed it. I, we had a great trip, man. Nice, uh, dude. A lot of fun. So, well, congrats to AP and his wife, man. That's uh, I'm glad the wedding was good. Glad you. I'm glad you and me had a great time. Man. Dude, it was that so was fun, awesome, bro. It was so fun. It, we just lit, we packed up the cooler in the back yeah. of the car, got some ice, had a bunch of drinks, had some snacks, you know, fruit, whatever, and just like I said, man, just rolled the windows down. She had the feet up on the dash and just driving, just mm. cruising, man. Just serious radio the whole way. She was just playing DJ, switching all the channels. We had a little Rue Jew. We had a little Howard Stern, some interviews in there, some sports talk, some 80s on 8, some 90s on 9, some 70s on 7, <laughs> little 60s on 6, whatever you want. Wow. We had it, dude. It was fun. It was uh, something that I want to do again, man. Cool. That's sick. Um, I want to take more trips. Sounds like some quality time, yeah. eh? I want to take more road trips. Honestly, speaking of Vegas, just to put a capper on this, we talked about, I think the next time I go to Vegas, I might just drive out. Yeah? 12 hours, that ain't nothing, dude. I felt like we, we rolled that six hours. It was six hours in South Dakota. I felt like we did it like that. Nothing. When we went there on the way, we woke up um, early in the morning. We jetted out of the crib. Goal was to leave about 5.30 a.m., uh, we were at a half hour behind schedule, so we left about 6 a.m. That's not bad for you guys. Not bad, dude. Exactly. Not Thank you, bad God. for you Thank, guys at I know, all. I know you were taking a shot at us, but uh, Man, well, but <laughs> that's, still, that's I, I, I'm really proud. <laughs> no, I know you're taking shots. That's, so that's really fine. good. That's fine. That's fine. I'll let her. I'll let her know you're taking shots, and she'll have a call <laughs> for you later. Nice. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, dude. So we left at 6 a.m. We were up there by 12:30, Sick. one o'clock. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Between 12.30 and 1, we were up there ready to go. So I was like, if we did the same thing in Vegas, you roll in about 5 o'clock, like have dinner, mm -hmm. jam it up. I, I just had fun, dude. I had so much fun on the road trip, and I do not ever have nearly that amount of fun in a plane, yeah. uh, riding with people, oh, getting sick. Planes, kids. planes are great because they get you somewhere Quickly, a lot right. quicker. Right. But they're stressful, man, with right. security and getting there two hours ahead. And yeah, all my dad's moving to Alaska. We're not going to be road tripping up through Canada. I you wouldn't. know what I mean? Like, yeah. we're not going to be driving 3,000 miles. That's going to be a flight. But <laughs> yeah, I'm just no saying, doubt. Vegas, South Dakota, like, if Ooh, I'm not yeah. out, yeah, dude, if I'm just with my lady, like, fun, man. So yeah. much fun. Just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed having her as a road trip uh, That's cool. partner, too, dude. We just, we just had such a blast. I like it. Such a blast. So um, let's jump into. Uh, some topics from the weekend and let's just start with UFC, man. Uh, do you want to talk the card first? Do you want to get Mueller on the phone uh, and talk the card and then we'll go through, I have some sound from uh, the post fight press conferences and stuff like that. Um, I said we get Mueller on the phone. Yeah, we might as, we might as well, right? Just call him up, get call him on him the up, phone. See what's up, see what he has to say. Uh, he and I, as you're getting ready to do this, he and I actually watched it together, man. We went to uh, the Brick House, which is what we did on the last big card. Yeah. So, uh, man, we had a great time because what, what you know, when you go to bars, they don't actually play the sound. Yes, I right? hate that. That's why I hate watching Dude, uh, not, not at the Brick there. House. Really? They crank that sound up. We knew exactly what was going on. And the commentators make the fight. Here right, Joe exactly. Rogan and here exactly. these guys, dude. It makes it so much better. So, dude, we had a great time. Robin was out with her family, and then she met up with us like halfway through the fight and got to hang with us. So, ah, oh, man, it was great, great time. Dope. All right, let me uh, let me call my man up. Hit here. him up. Mueller will break down UFC two thirty nine. That's how we do it. Watch him. Not Someday answer. we're not going to have people. We're not going to have to have the phone ringing on the show. Yeah, no doubt, right? Mueller. What up? Mueller. What up? Mueller. Yo. What's Mueller. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, guy? How you doing? Dude, I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? Doing good, dude. We, uh, we're we going to break down UFC 239. Obviously, you being the UFC aficionado, you can fill uh, hopefully fill in some of the holes in our mm -hmm. coverage here for the audience. But um, let's jump right into the card, man, uh, and jump into the main card. Now, I didn't watch the prelims. I didn't yeah. watch any of the pre-fight. So is there anything that we need to cover on there before we get to the main card? Because I was in a rush. I was just trying to watch the main card last night in my doing my research after I got back from vacation. So is there anything else we need to cover, or can we jump into the main card? card you know there were some good fights on the undercards man but i would say that with this one the main card is the real attraction did you see who dana white gave the fight of the night to or fights of the night did you see all that 
Uh, no, I didn't follow the bonuses. I watched all the post-fight pressers, but to be honest, I could care less about the bonuses. Well, I'm going to tell you the bonuses anyway, so just put your phone on mute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, he actually gave, it was, I think it was 50 Gs. It was split up, and it was, it was uh, 50 Gs to Nunes, who got the knockout. Mm-hmm. Your boy, I don't even know how to say his name, Jan. Uh, how do you say the last name? Blachowicz? Jan Blahovich. 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 So Jan got some, Nunez got some, and then um, obviously uh, Masvidal. Masvidal got some. So it was like a three-way tie for bonus fight of the night, or however they broke it up, or whatever. Uh, but what was your favorite fight of the night, man? Uh, you know, my, I would say my favorite fight of the night, just from a fight purpose, uh, would have been the Jones Santos fight. The outcome was Masvidal Askren. Gotcha. What mm-hmm. about you, Dell? Uh, for me, yeah. I mean, I was, <laughs> I, I loved the the John Bones Jones. I thought uh, Thiago Santos went toe to toe with John Jones. I didn't know that we expected that. We expected some hard, gra- uh, you know, pounding shots from Santos. But for him, uh, as strategic as he was, and and still being very very smart with his moves, because John Bones Jones, dude, can take anybody out in right. any given second. We've seen that, dude. Um, that's why he is still yet undefeated, minus one DQ disqualification. Um, but I was really impressed with Santos, man. I think he held himself well. And the thing that, uh, and I think Mueller, you and I talked about it, was there was obviously something wrong with not only one knee from Santos, but maybe multiple knees. We haven't heard any things with, did he actually tear his ACL? Did he tear an MCL? Did, but that guy's knees weren't right. And for him to still maintain against arguably the best fighter in history, John Bones Jones, what a great showing. For Santos, that's so that was my favorite. Here's what I'll say: that let's just start with that fight. Uh, this is something that they did not talk about on the card, and I was surprised, especially with all the people they have going back, viewing replays, mm-hmm. watching the fight closely, feeding information into the announcers' ears. Yeah, this is something they never brought up. Go back and watch that tape at the end of the first round. There's a little flurry. Yeah, at the end of the very first round, there's kind of a little bit of a flurry, and they kind of get a, mixed up a little bit along the cage. Then you hear the horn. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Santos is walking away and he's limping noticeably and he starts rubbing that knee. Yeah. He starts kind of wa- just walking away. And did you notice that Mueller? You know what I'm talking about? So I did. And I actually do have a little bit of background on his injury. Okay. He had knee surgery about 45 days before oh, the fight. Wow. And to repair what? he's been told multiple times to pull out. Uh, and he was the one refusing and wanting to stay in that fight. But yeah, you, you saw it buckle, man. All those leg kicks he was throwing, and yeah. you saw that left knee buckle, and that was that was it. What did he have surgery to repair? So they never actually stated what it was in oh, okay. all the injury report, but it was a it was a left knee surgery, and it looks like from the rumor mill it was an MCL. So I think at the end of that first round, you saw him buckle, you saw him kind of limping, and then where it note and the the they never showed that replay. They never talked about it. They never showed it anything in the first round. The, where they started showing the replay was the second round where he threw that leg kick, and then that's where you saw it buckle, and you kind of saw the look on his face, mm-hmm. and he knew something was wrong, yeah. and he was trying not to show John Jones that he knew something was wrong. Right. But you could tell that's where it buckled, and that's when they started showing it on TV. Yeah, and that's where but it started protecting it. it. Yeah, yeah. But it, I think it was before that, dude. I think it happened at the beginning of the first round like i said go back and watch the end of that first round and you'll see kind of what i'm talking about it's up against the cage and he starts the the whistle goes and he starts or the horn sounds and he starts limping towards his corner Hmm. um i know a lot of people were kind of disappointed with the fight or the outcome of the fight i personally stand in the corner of the champ and if you're going to take the belt from the champ you've got to definitively beat the champ he didn't do enough to beat john jones in this fight and i don't know there's a lot of people on social media saying that he did or saying that the that um uh, they didn't like the way the fight was scored. It is what it is. I thought he won, he won round. I thought you could have given him round one. Yeah. You could have given him round five. Yeah. I thought Jones won two, three, and four. Um, and I just don't think he did even close to enough to take that title from Jones. Where you at, Mueller? Yeah. So Dallas and I actually said this to some random people next to us at the bar. They were questioning the decision, and I just looked over and I said, "John Jones can't get his first loss like this." Exactly. Yeah. It just exactly. No way. No way. Not so, so, yeah. But I would say I would give Santos one. I would give him five. And round four was the question mark for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. I think round four could have gone either way, but I think that they absolutely got it right. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so I, 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 do, I do too. I, I totally agree on that. And I think Santos probably earned his right to run it back. But even if we do run this fight back, and Mueller, I think you'd probably, uh, I think you'd probably agree with this. And if not, please let me know. Uh, but even if we do run this back, John Jones is going to make the corrections. Like, I, I still don't think Santos can beat Jones unless Santos just catches Jones, you know, uh, with, with one of his haymakers. I, I don't I don't see I, I think I think John Jones makes the corrections if we do run this back. I think this would be the same story as like the John Jones Alexander Gustafson double fights. Yep. The first fight, Gustafson had him dead to rights at points. He had probably beat him, but the second fight, John Jones was ready and it will be the same story. Yeah. I would agree with that. Did you see John Jones in the uh post fight presser and in the in the uh in John Jones is Go ahead. He's the most dedicated to the preparation for the fights of any fighter I think I've ever seen. There is no stone left unturned when John Jones gets ready for a fight. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, he, in the post-fight press conference and in the octagon with Joe Rogan, he said he asked. He was asked multiple times, "Why didn't you take him down?" Why didn't you explore that part of the game? And he said, well, I felt like I was winning. I felt like I was doing well with what we were doing, and I kind of wanted to beat him at his own game. I wanted to test myself almost. He, he said that, and it, I, that wasn't the exact quote, but he kind of was saying, I wanted to test myself against his game. This is what he's best at. I wanted to see what I could do. And I think once he realized the knees were hurt, and once, and like he said, he thought he was winning. about John Jones. Go ahead. He's, he's a consummate professional. He's, he's made some terrible decisions in his life and in his career and, and that set him back decades, basically. He said that but too. He's the best prepared fighter you're ever going to see. Mm -hmm. Well, like Dallas said, he's going to make the changes in the next fight. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know that we really need to see a rematch, even though I think Santos stood in there and went tough with him and with the, with the messed up knee, mm -hmm. but we didn't even see close to what John Jones, yeah. the best of John Jones in that fight. Yeah, we didn't see a lot of John Jones. He stood right Jones in front of him, got his leg part. chopped down. Well, the size of Texas on from yeah. those inside of those leg kicks. He had to get carried out of the octagon and backstage. Yeah. He didn't even walk away. Uh, so we, And I don't think in the next fight he doesn't take him down at all and he doesn't just stand in front of him. I right. think those are two things that probably change. Yeah, I think we've seen kind of the best with Santos. Uh, what do you think, Mueller, on that? Like Santos is probably one of the, the better kickboxers out there. So he played that game. John Jones still withstood and lasted, uh, outlasted uh, Santos from that perspective. So I think, you know, where, where do we go from here uh, with Jones, Mueller? Dude, this is where this gets tough. Um, okay. John Jones has said time and time again that he's not done it light heavyweight, that he wants to keep doing it. But who's he going to fight? John right. Jones has to go up to heavyweight. It, it just has to happen. Right. There's no one fun left to watch him fight. Right. So then we're either talking about like a like a DC, which again I don't know that we're going to see another one of those. So then, depending on what happens with Stipe and uh, DC, could we see a John Jones Stipe? Dude, we absolutely could. There's a couple interesting fights for John at heavyweight. Uh, Stipe would be the one that would be the most intriguing to me. Yeah. But I think it'd be fun to watch like a John Jones. Francis Ngannou or Ooh. John Jones Jr. Dos Santos. Like I know he's kind of over the hill, but for like a warm up, welcome to heavyweight fight, that could be pretty cool. Yeah. There's some interesting moves in heavy. John Jones has said he doesn't want to fight DC anymore. He's, he's sure. called DC a scrub. Basically, said, "Hey, I beat him twice. There's no reason to." Right. And I think he's right. I agree. But there's not a lot of parity, you know. Yeah. Totally, totally. Well, that brings me to my next uh, question. So we'll go into uh, the women's bant uh, bantamweight. So you have Nunez uh, against Holly Holm and, you know, the preacher's daughter. And obviously, uh, Amanda, uh, you know, super great, right? So she, she holds the belt in bantamweight. She also holds it in, is it flyweight? Featherweight. Featherweight. Sorry. Oh, gotcha. So yeah, so she she's got uh, so she's double double so she's double champ, right? Um, Only one defending double champ. Yeah, no doubt. And with this fight, Jared, correct me if I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, with this fight uh, against Holly Holm, she has now beat all the champions in 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 both divisions that are still fighting today am i correct with that with this last uh matchup against holly holm uh because holly holm obviously dethroned uh rousey and took the belt so amanda nunez has now fought and beat all champions previous in both divisions am i correct on that 
I don't believe so. I believe Amanda Nunes would still need to fight Jermaine Durand to me for that to be entirely Mm -hmm. gotcha. Gotcha. Correct. Um, The thing is, so Amanda Nunes has said, uh, oh, no, you're right, dude. She beat Jermaine Durand to me way before the title. She beat Jermaine in 2013. Gotcha. Yep. So. I, here's the thing. Amanda Nunes has said, I want to defend the featherweight title. I want to be the first person to simultaneously defend two belts. Wow. The problem is, though, that division was basically created for Cyborg, and there really isn't any competition in it. Correct. Right? Without running Cyborg back. Right, which Cyborg and has a match. In the white right, which Cyborg has a match from somebody who's who we've never heard of i think the end of this month or next month i can't remember but again yeah i think you're right the ufc and dana white literally created that division for cyborg and and the fact that we've already taken cyborg out nunez has it's like that division's probably going to go away wouldn't you think it it should yeah it it really is good there's no one to fight so i'm not sure man i think the most likely thing we see for nunez is round three with shevchenko that was the wow. toughest challenge Nuno had. Yeah. And Shevchenko holding the 125. I could see Dana saying, cool, let's uh, let's give you a shot at 135 again. You'll get your third run back at Nunez. And let's see if you can do it. I think that's the only fight that makes sense. Gotcha. But that'd be a third a third go. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I, Shevchenko's a badass. There's no doubt about it in her own right in her own division. But uh, again, as we've saw twice before going against Nunez, I just don't think I just don't think Shevchenko has it. I actually it. have some sound from Dana White at the press conference, UFC 239. He was really asked about the uh, Chris Cyborg and a couple other things. I'll play that really quick for us. Uh, let's see. Verbal. Okay, fair enough. I appreciate that. Okay, everybody got it before it became anything other than verbal. Oh, um, there we go. You know, she wants the Cyborg rematch. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're down to make the Cyborg rematch. So, um, you know, Cyborg always thinks that I'm being whatever to her, whatever. I'm not. I, I, if Cyborg, I don't blame Cyborg for not wanting this fight. I don't blame her. I'm not trying to say anything about her. If she doesn't want it. That's fine. There's always somebody else. You know, she's got both belts and she's willing to defend them both. And she's healthy. You know, you hear these people. It's like you guys were asking me a million times leading into the Cejudo fight and other fights that we've done this with, you know, ah, what, what, what if they have both belts, they can't defend them, and I'll go in and I'll say they got to give up one belt. We gave them the opportunity. We thought they could do it. She's not hurt. You know what I mean? She's fighting all the best in the world, destroying them, and she's not hurt. She can t- I just saw her skipping down the, you know, the hallway in the background when I was walking here. She's, like, in the best mood. You know, this woman is tough, man. She's unbelievable. Pound for pound. One of the greatest of all time. There you go. Dana wow. White talking about Amanda Nunes. Were you able to hear that sound, Jared? Uh, nope, not at all. Damn it. I'm sorry, dude. That's just the wiring we have set up here. I'll have to figure that out. But basically, Dana White was just saying he will make the uh, he will make the match happen with Chris Cyborg. Cyborg is the one that's saying maybe she doesn't want to do the fight. Mm. So uh, Nunes is saying, I'm down. I'm down to fight whoever, whenever. I'm healthy. And that was the biggest thing he's saying is a lot of these people that are double champs, they end up not being healthy enough to fight both divisions. He, this is not the case with her. So he's saying that he's not holding her back. He's not putting any restrictions on her. It's right. purely up to her. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did something more with Connor. He kind of let Connor make his own fights, and we kind of saw how that worked out, though. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Good point. Good yeah. point. No doubt. Uh, Mueller, anything else uh, with either the Bantamweight, Nunez, Holly Holm? Real quick, I guess, what I would say with Holly, uh, what does this do for her? I think this is her either third loss in a row. That was a brutal knockout, too. Third or fourth. And, yeah, this is brutal. So, you know, where does Holly go from here? What is your speculation on that? Um, I mean, I truthfully, dude, I hope she retires. I think that there's not much left. She can't. Is she in the Rousey? Is she kind of in that Rousey situation? Yeah, she she's kind of in the Rousey Misha Tate situation. Yeah, she beat a champ, she lost the belt, she tried to fight the current champ and got destroyed. It, it's the same thing. Not only did she two. get destroyed, but Ma- Amanda Nunes said, "I wanted to beat her the way she beats people," and she did exactly that with a brutal head kick. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> that head kick was brutal for sure. You, you can't make that up, dude. That was incredible. It's, it's crazy, and Amanda Nunes is that was something she's like I've never seen. Greatest Women MMA fighter ever. Oh, yeah. for sure, dude. Yeah, not it's it's not even close. No one is even t- 
<laughs> I, I mean, I know, I get, I know we always say that and we always, you know, feel like we have the best. And that's, what's so great about the UFC is just when you put someone at the top of the mountain as untouchable, yeah. someone better comes along and beats the shit out of them. And, uh, it's just the parody in, in, in UFC is incredible. I just don't know if we see that here. Like you said, I don't know what's left of the competition in flyweight or bantamweight yeah. realistically. Yeah. Uh, what about welterweight? I think it has to be Cyborg again. I think Cyborg and Shevchenko are all that's left. And if they, if Nunes beats them again, it's over, man. There's no one. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. Uh, well, probably to arguably the quickest and record-setting fight. Um, anything you have to say on... Uh, no, let's close on that one. Let's close on that one. Let's, on just, that let's one? just hit on the uh, Luke Rockhold fight really quick. Yeah, this is... We don't need to talk Diego Sanchez. That thing was a snooze fest. Yeah. We don't need to talk about that one. Let's hit on Jan and Luke Rockhold, and then we'll uh, finish off with the askren Masvidal fight. Mueller, I know you're a big Lo uh, Luke Rockhold fan. I know you have been for years. Um, obviously, and, and I sat with you, so I know how you know about this fight, but uh, give me a little bit of your uh, opinion on the fight, and then I think the most important thing is where does Rockhold go after this? He told just a second. Dallas told me that you said Rockhold was going to get knocked out today. You had a or last or on well, Saturday. You had not a knocked feeling. out necessarily, oh, you had a but he was lose. that he was going to lose. Well, well, Jan was plus one ninety on the betting, so I'm wondering why he didn't give me a call and hit me with a little <laughs> inside info here, Mueller, so I can cake up, okay? Because I would have thrown a hundred on Jan, walked you out with one hundred ninety, feeling I, good. I, I didn't, uh, I didn't bet on that one either. But yeah, I did call that. I didn't necessarily assume a, a knockout like what happened, but. Here's the problem, man. Luke Rockhold has had a rough last last couple of fights um, at 185, and he thought that jumping up to 205 was a good idea. But he ran into a guy that gave Gustafson trouble. He ran into a guy that's beaten some other pretty good 205ers. That's just giant in comparison to Luke Rockhold. I mean, it it's tough to say because Rockhold, when he was on his game, was one of the best in MMA. But it, it's just it's He's too big. He's too small to fight those two oh fivers. Yeah. It's it's tough. I think the when I watch the so fight I'm no, hoping Go ahead. I'm hoping that Luke either goes back down to middleweight and really focuses his craft to try and take out the, you know, Chris Weidman's or Yoel Romero's of the world, despite the fact that he can't. <laughs> or he, he just fights in kind of that lower tier of 205, the unranked guys, the bottom of the top 15. He's not a top five guy in 205. Yeah. I was just, I was going to say the same thing. I feel like we just keep watching him get beat and beat and beat, mm -hmm. and he's continued to give chance after chance, uh, fighting some of the top guys in the division and then also fighting some of the up-and-coming guys that are looking to be top guys in the division. He's not winning it either. So I agree with you. I think he's either got to drop weight I mean, or... It, it's kind of weird, dude. Dana White has historically given guys way more chances than they probably deserve. I mean, he's still letting BJ Penn fight, despite the fact that BJ Penn's been knocked out in like the last five fights. Right. Dana, Dana plays favorites and he plays them hard. Mm -hmm. uh, let's move into the let's move into the last fight. Uh, ben Askren, George Masvidal, definitely the the knockout of the night. Um, Probably one of the f more fun fights for me just because I can't stand Ben Askren. I think a lot of people feel the same way. <laughs> You're not alone. I didn't think the Robbie Lawler fight. We obviously, we saw Robbie didn't get choked out. Yeah. We saw, the, what really got me, that I didn't really know a ton about Ben Askren before that fight. What really got me about that fight was in the post-fight press conference when they asked, do you want to run it back with Robbie? And he said, oh, well, uh, I think everyone saw the tape. I, I, yeah. I, I just don't think there's any, really, really any need. Yeah. I don't think there's a reason to run it back. I think everyone just saw what happened out there. Oh, they saw you not choke him out? Yeah. Is that what you're saying, Ben? Cop out. So uh, I loved seeing this more than anything. Uh, how did you see this fight? Dude, this fight was exactly what I wanted. I wanted Ben Askren to just get destroyed, and he did. Um, the problem with Askren is he runs his mouth a ton, and he was right. leveraging. He, he tries to do the Conor McGregor, Michael Bisping, but what he does is he takes it so personal. Mm -hmm. And... He came up against a guy in, in Masvidal that's, you know, been through the rounds. He's got 34 professional wins. Um, that's not a guy you come and run your mouth to. And I think uh, Masvidal gave him exactly what he promised. He gave him a beating of a lifetime. 
Yeah, I think that was Masvidal's, I think that was his 15th knockout in his career. So if you're looking at like 34 wins, that's damn near half. Half of his fights have been knockouts. This guy is nothing to mess with, you know? So am I shocked? No, but uh, that that was a record setting. I mean, it was actually before five seconds, but this was Mueller, this was a record setting five second fastest UFC knockout in history, correct? Yeah, and technically, I mean, it was over in two. Yeah. The ref just couldn't get there fast right. enough to pull I know. him off him. And that's 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 what everybody's argument is. Uh, you know, I think we're going to play a couple sound bites here. But you know, on the post presser, I think you would allude to this uh, that you know Masvidal was asked, like, "Hey, dude, do you think the extra two shots were a little a little much?" And Masvidal's like, "What do you mean? What are you talking about?" And he and he basically says, uh, "Well, you know, you had two shots after he was knocked out." And then he alludes to, well, this is my job, and it's the job of the referee to take me off. It just happened so quick. Yeah, it's, the referee couldn't even get there quick dude, enough. I, I do the exact same thing if I'm Jorge. I'm hitting him with two shots. I'm doing the exact same thing. You don't know. Yeah. How many times in this sport have we seen people recover and beat someone in the third round yeah. where you're like, wow, I thought this guy was out in the first 25, 30 seconds of the first. Yeah. How did this happen? And uh, he had to do what he had to do. Dude, anyone that... <laughs> For the, the fact that that question's even asked at an MMA press conference, that means you're an MMA, MMA journalist. You're there yeah. to cover the sport. Yeah. You haven't seen this happen over and over. Guys thinking they have a guy beat and then not finishing him in the first round and getting yeah. killed in the third or killed later on in the fight. Come on, man. As, Ma, as Ma, uh, Masvidal says, he's like, hey, if you have a problem with it, maybe you should go watch soccer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly well, what he well, said. Well, I'll play that soundbite uh, when we get off the phone with you, Mueller, because I yeah. don't want to hold you up here. with uh, You can't even hear the sound anyway. But... Um, what happens here? Do they give Ben Askren a rematch, uh, rematch on this fight, do you think? I know Masvidal's oh, ready to fight the not. champ. Yeah. There's there's no way they're going to run this back. Cool. There, there's absolutely no way. They can't. I initially, when I first saw it, I initially thought it was a little bit lucky. I was like, man, he got lucky. You know, that was a super lucky thing. Yeah. I would have loved to see the whole fight play out. But the more I watched it back and then the more I saw on social media, and then I saw him the day before in the gym yeah. practicing the flying knees. And the more 24, I talked to Yeah, 24 to 48 hours before the yeah. actual fight, he's practicing flying knees. I uh, I was like, man, he, he, he scouted it. He studied it. And that's what my homie Vitzer was talking to me about. I was like, I don't know, man. It seemed lucky. And I was kind of like just wanting to see more. Of a, I wanted to see more of what Maz, uh, Masvidal was made of mm -hmm. against Askren's ground game and stuff, but I'm still happy with it. Yeah. The more sure. now that I think about it, I'm being selfish because I still got what I wanted. Now I got what I wanted in a better way, almost. You know. Totally. So, um, it was it was awesome, man. I, ben Askren was minus two ten on the betting mark, so uh, that means Masvidal was plus one seventy five. Easiest hundred seventy five dollars you ever made if you put a hundred on Masvidal. Easiest hundred seventy five you ever came up. Yep. We should have done. Where were you on that one too, Mueller? Maybe yeah, a Mueller. little call before UFC 240. Be cool. We can discuss some things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. We uh, we can we can definitely do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy fight, man, and it it makes welterweight really really interesting in the future here. For sure, um, I'm really excited to see what they do with 170. You think they give him a title fight now, dude? This is where this gets rough because. Colby Covington was technically the interim champion. Mm -hmm. He got hurt, so then he didn't fight. So now he's got a fight coming up in a few weeks. And I think that the winner of that fight has to fight Masvidal for like a number one contender uh. spot. The crazy thing is, though, Covington and Masvidal are bros, dude. They're like best homies. Mm. Watching them have to fight would be interesting. Mm. Wow, crazy. Now, they don't train together or anything, do they, Mueller? They're just real good buddies. They're homies. They train together. They do all, do all they? kinds okay. of things. So that'll be an interesting fight. Hmm, interesting. Crazy, man. Well, we'll let uh, we'll let you go on that note, man. I appreciate you joining us to talk uh, some UFC and chop it up here for a little bit. Um, always appreciate the insight, man. If there's anything more that um, you have to uh, allude to or anything more you want to plug, go ahead, bro. All right. I guess we'll let him go. Mueller, we're letting you go. Thank you for ha <laughs> thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's, how, that's what happens when we do it live. Yeah, no doubt. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to play the Masvidal uh, sound just because I thought it was so good mm -hmm. from the post-fight press conference. Uh, let me hear. Let me get that together. Here we go. Fastest knockout in USC history and uh, clearly a fight that was very personal to you. So along the way, uh, you've had some great wins. Where, where does this one rank all time out of, of all your accomplishments? It wasn't personal, man. I just don't like the dude. I knew how to get inside his head, and uh, that's it, man, you know? There's nothing personal for me. It's just business. I'm here to get these checks, get paid, 
and uh, make sure that I, got, I put enough money away for my kids to go to university so that belts was next. I'm glad I got to end that dude, man. You started with flying knees before. I mean, was there a decision that, you know, you thought you could knock him out with it, or is that just the way you wanted to start the fight? I mean, why was that the, the initial move? He's so predictable, man. He's, he's a scrub. But a part of me just wanted to throw it out there so he knew, like, if you do shoot like an idiot, like you only know how to, your head's gonna get clipped, and that would put the brakes on him, and then I'd beat him up for 14 minutes and 30 seconds and execute him. Or, you know, he took the bait. You know, I put my hands behind my back, and he probably thought we were gonna fucking patty kick it up or something, I don't know, but he walked right into it, you know? I saw some criticism, people say the punches weren't really necessary, maybe- They were super necessary. <laughs> why were they necessary? What do you mean, why were they not necessary? Because he was already knocked out at that point but it, the referee hadn't pulled me off. And my job is to hit somebody till the referee pulls me off. So to those people, I would say, maybe don't watch him and may go back to soccer. I saw some other criticisms, perhaps, of your celebration afterwards. Any regrets at the celebration or your behavior in the cage afterwards? Uh, man, there's not too many people that I've disliked. I have over 50 pro fights, and he's one of them, you know. He talked about my manhood, talked about my culture, my ethnicity. Where, where do we drop? Why do certain people get to do stuff? You Online, so you could do anything. Everything is cool before a fight. You're allowed to do and say whatever you want. Like other fighters are not doing, talking about people's religions, wife, even kids. That's cool. But after a fight, I'm not allowed to showboat and rub it in your face so you and guys like you could see it and be like, maybe I don't talk so much shit because when I cross one of these real motherfuckers, they're going to make me pay for it, man. They're going to embarrass the shit out of me. And it's not over for Ben either. He still has to deal with me. If I see him at Whole Foods, I'm going to still slap that dude up because I don't like him. You want a title shot next. How soon do you want to get in the octagon with Kamaru Usman? It could be tomorrow. I'm ready. I, it, as you see, I didn't. I know they said I was in a fight. The rumors are saying that I was in a fight, but I wasn't. A fight is usually longer than five seconds, so I wasn't in a fight. No injuries. I'm ready to go tomorrow. Did that go exactly how you expected it to go? Yes and no. My my whole vision of this, if you if you could get inside my head and replay my thoughts, were me beating his ass for 14 minutes and then putting him out like that. I really wanted to hurt him for as long as I could, as much as I could, destroy his kneecaps, bust his ribs, make him piss blood, and then send him home packing. But, you know, he got, I think in a way he got off easy. Dang. Wow. wow. There you go, dude. Jorge Masvidal. Yeah. That guy's no joke, bro. No joke. So that was the first time I had actually watched a full fight. <laughs> I guess I was going to say in, in, in its entirety. Sure. I've seen highlights of Jorge before, but I, haven't, I, didn't really, I wasn't really checking up on him. Um, so I thought it was awesome, dude. I thought the guy came across great. I thought his personality came across cool. I thought he came across like a badass. Obviously, I thought he did great in the fight. Everything about the guy, I'm a fan. Yeah. Didn't know too much about the guy before, but he gained a new fan in me, dude. I'm, sure. I'm a fan of that guy. He beats ass. He's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to see what he can do against the champ. Yeah. I'm, it'll like, like Mueller said, that'll be really interesting to see what Dana White does with him next yeah. um, for that fight, whether he has to fight his homeboy or he's going to uh, go on for the title. We'll see it's what so happens. Smart. No, I like it after that post-game presser, man. Whew. I mean, he was honest, though. Like, I don't think any of it was showboating, anything like that. He was confident with his answers. He's like, look, man, my job is to keep fighting until I get pulled off. It is what it is. You know, you've seen, we've talked about it. You've seen things come back and bite you in the ass if you don't finish it when you're supposed to finish it. Yep. Uh, I like the Whole Foods. Uh, I hope I hope Ben Askren, for his health and safety, I hope he doesn't go shop at Whole Foods. Maybe he needs, <laughs> maybe, maybe he needs to go to Sprouts instead. So Maybe a Sprouts guy. Ben Askren, I know you're listening so when you listen to this hey man just go to sprouts yeah just do sprouts i'm guy. just looking out for you guys yeah do okay. some sprouts yeah damn uh one thing as we wrap up ufc here and move on um one thing i wanted to ask mueller about i forgot was the uh altercation in the crowd if you missed that there was an altercation in the crowd between nate diaz ah, and khabib yeah. nurgan nurgan madoff and um they just exchanged some words let me play the sound from dana white and then we'll kind of break that down and diaz talking shit to each other back and forth and everybody, you know, broke it up. We moved Diaz and then Diaz left after the Melendez fight. Just verbal or was there physical verbal, at all? No, verbal. Okay, fair enough. They appreciate that. It, everybody got it before it became anything other than verbal. So there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is video out there. It's not much going on. Diaz is kind of walking back in the row behind Khabib yep. and they're kind of looking back at each other, jawing, talking shit, whatever. And then uh, Diaz kind of throws his hands up like this and then Khabib stands up Yeah. and then Diaz starts going towards him. And that's when it kind of gets people, it gets a little scary and people start kind of grabbing at sure. each other. Um, is it weird that, okay, so UFC has been around a long time, right? 
Is this a new problem for the UFC, this fighting outside of the octagon and in the crowd and all this stuff? Is this going to be a new problem we're going to see more of, or is this a problem with this one guy? Because he is the guy that's been involved in multiple uh, altercations outside of the octagon. So he is the source of this. He is the one to blame. How do you view it? Um, yeah, I do. I, because if we look back at this, so Masvidal and Ben Askren, I believe, stayed at the same hotel. Somebody can check my facts on that, okay. but there was a leaked video of them talking shit together at the hotel wow. lobby. So did they act? No. As a matter of fact, Masvidal still had his hands behind oh, his back. Oh, in the hotel video? In the hotel. Wow. So, so he was just, Masvidal kept his cool. That's what I like cool. about Jorge, dude, is he he's did. ready to beat your ass, but he's yeah. ready to do it when it's time. Yeah. And um, he's going to let you know. He's smart. He's, he's smart. Make, he's making smart business decisions. So I think he said this, he wants to get his kids into college. This is the he said in the post fight yeah, presser. I think this is more of a Khabib thing. Gotcha. To answer your question, because of just this this instance, right? Even somebody as crazy as Jorge Masvidal, uh, still keeping his cool in the hotel where nobody was protecting him. Nobody and, was around, and yeah. he could he could have got in some shots. Askren just walked away as well. So I super proud of both of them, but and, and save it for the ring. I think it's a Khabib thing. I really do. I think Khabib, you know, and I think some mean things have been said about Khabib right. and his religion of and course. his weird He's hat. Offended. His, yeah. his weird hat that supposedly does have religious, yep. uh, you know, surrounding it as well. Whatever, man. So I think I think it's just I think it's a Khabib thing. I agree with you. I think there's some kind of a barrier there, yeah. or his people aren't doing a good enough job of communicating to him sure. and helping him understand that. Hey, man, yeah. this, this is, is life. This is. We get paid to punch people in the face. We're paid to fight, but we're not paid to fight outside of that yeah. right there, that cage. Yeah. We're not paid to do anything outside of that. So anything you do outside of that is not only going You're to fucked. maybe result in you paying money and uh, fines, yeah. you being suspended from being able to fight in there, which taking is now taking money away, away more money, you. Yeah. Uh, your, your ability to earn income, right? Yeah. Um, and also assault charges, yeah. jail time, stuff that happens in the real world. Things that go on outside the of ring. being able to punch your coworkers in the face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in a normal corporate environment, we can't do that. Nope. Well, guess what? You can't act like that in a normal world either. And sure. I guess that's where I think some there, some of the struggles are coming along. Either his people aren't doing a good job of communicating that to him. They're continuing to feed him the, you're the baddest man on the planet. No one can mess with you. No one can fuck with you. You're the real champ, blah, 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 blah. They're continuing to put that in his ear, but they're not letting him know, hey, man, this can all be taken away from you yeah. uh, with one swing outside of the ring. Yeah. You know, with something he needs, stupid. He needs a better team, better advisors. Better, better friends, <laughs> right? Like what? Something, yeah, that surrounds him to make help him make better decisions. And, and people will ask, well, why are you not saying that about Diaz? Diaz has been, Diaz is an antagonist. Yeah. Diaz has always been an antagonist. But we've never had issues where Diaz jumped out the K yeah. where he's going and, you know, fighting yeah. people in the crowd. There's been other instances of this, but it didn't get to the level yeah. Khabib got. And it's now it just feels like Khabib's wrapped up in this again. Yeah. And I think Khabib also doesn't know the difference between hyping a fight and promoting a fight and mm -hmm. beating someone up outside of the outside of the cage. Yeah. I think Diaz. There's, there's some authenticity to Diaz, sure. but I think he also grew up in the fight game and knows the fight game enough to where he knows we can talk this shit and butt heads outside, but what we do in the cage is what matters, and he that's knows. what gets us paid. And that's yeah. why him and Conor McGregor have become yeah. pretty good boys. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you. They didn't like to be boys. They weren't boys yeah. when they were fighting. But two times. Yeah, but I but I think, yeah, I, I think... Yeah, Diaz Diaz appreciates the respect of McGregor and getting them both paid exactly and following that regiment. So what I was going to ask you, and I think we just answered our own question or my question at least, is why do you think Diaz is going after Khabib? Why why did this even happen? Is it because of the bad blood between Khabib and McGregor or McGregor, and then kind of Diaz being a part of that, saying, "Nah, man, we ain't gonna play that." McGregor did a lot for me. He got me a lot of money. You know, there's a respect thing because of that. That's interesting. Business decision, but that's that's some thinking I did in the background. I don't want to speculate too much because I don't totally. want to say anyone, you know, it could have been Nate Diaz uh, walking by yeah. and talking some shit to Khabib yeah. and then Khabib. Khabib could have just farted and Diaz like, yo, dog. Exactly. I don't appreciate that. What's that smell? Is that your hat? Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. You <laughs> could have wash him. your hat. Right. Because it's told him some stuff. So who knows? I don't know. I, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but I know that, um, I don't know. For some reason, it's never felt like it could get. Uh, it's like okay, they they muscle up, they get in each other's face. Same thing at weigh-ins, right? Yeah, you muscle up, you get in each other's face. You go sure. chest to chest, maybe a little pushing, 
But that's usually as far as you think it goes. When I feel like Khabib's in it, and it, maybe I'm, this is burned in my mind because of the altercation in the, during the McGregor fight or after the McGregor fight, but I just feel like this is not promo. This is not to promote the fight. This is not to hype some shit up. This is to go hurt the guy. And uh, we don't, this guy's a loose cannon. Be on guard at all times. You don't know what this guy's going to do right. in, outside the octagon. So it just feels like that to me. That's right. Yep. I agree. You know? Um, so let's move on, man. Let's, uh, we, uh, we hit the UFC pretty heavy here. Let's move on to, uh, the NBA free agency. And on this day in sports history, okay, we'll break this down really quick. We did this last show. Uh, it's coincidental that it's LeBron's 10 year anniversary of decision. Oh yeah. July 8th, 2008. Taking my talents to South beach. Yeah. Young kid leaving Cleveland. This is it. 10 year anniversary. Uh, wow. well, I guess 11 year anniversary, 11 year, right? Yeah. So, um, but it is nonetheless the anniversary of LeBron's decision. And then we see all this crazy stuff happen with free agency this year. Mm -hmm. This is the most loaded free agent class. We've talked all about it. NBA has really tried to NFLize their brand over mm -hmm. this. They've really tried to push. They try to do it with the draft, having it in prime time. And also they're really trying to take the NFL's business model here. The problem, I just don't know that you're going to be, you're going to be able to do this consistently because when are we going to see another free agent cl uh, class like this? Like this, yeah. You know, when are all these guys going to be available at that time? And it may happen more and more often than it did before because of everyone being able to move teams and not uh, not wanting to sign long deals. People are signing three-year deals, four-year deals, five-year deals. They're not signing the crazy long deals, so they're out of contracts quicker. So we may see it more than it used to, uh, or it may occur, occur more than it used to, but I don't know that it's going to be something we see on the regular every off season, Right. You know? Uh, so starting there and at that point, um, let's just say, let's just talk about the winners and losers during free agency, I guess. Okay. Some of the contenders who became contenders here, if you want to start there. Hmm. Number one, number one team in free agency for you or number one team going into this, se this season based off free agency. It's, it's hard telling. So it seems like this uh, free agency, what we've seen is going from teams with the big three. Yes. Right. Starting with the Celtics back in the day with, you know, a Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and then either Rondo or whoever you want to spend it. It seems like this free agency, I'm seeing big twos, a mm. lot of big twos, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You've got the, you've got the Brooklyn Nets, you know, obviously agreeing to sign Kyrie and KD. Then you have Kawhi recruiting Paul George, but the initial rumor was, and I don't know if you heard much about this, but the initial rumor that Kawhi was trying to get KD I did see to that. go with him to yeah, LA. Yeah. So then obviously a second best pick, whatever it is, whatever the rumor is. Why do you is, think KD didn't do that? Um, Because the Clippers. It's still an LA team, so you still have a lot of light there, but him going to a New York team that is up and coming, you look at all that young squad and what they did, now, granted, D'Lo is not going to be there, so D'Angelo Russell is not going to be there this year. We know kind of where he went and that whole thing, but I think there's a lot of room to grow, and I think Kyrie's already involved. I don't know for sure. I haven't read this yet, but with Jay-Z and that ownership there right. that they have, I think that could be obviously something KD's interested in, um, and being in Brooklyn, uh, the Knicks aren't shit, and I hate to say that, but they're not. They continue to not be. James Dolan needs to get the hell out of office. They're not making good decisions, period. <laughs> and they didn't even want to take a chance on KD. Did you hear about that? No. James Dolan came out and said, as an organization, we do not want to take the chance and risk on Kevin Durant, signing Kevin Durant with his Achilles injury. Wow. They said that, dude. That's crazy. I didn't see that. So that being said, I think we're seeing a lot of big twos now. And I think Kawhi, obviously recruiting uh, Paul George, I did not expect that. That came out of left field for me. Um, and also, I think even... The Clippers, Ka Kawhi going to the Clippers, I think, was kind of more of the latter choice than obviously the Lakers uh, and, and or staying with Toronto. It seemed like the latest rumor, you know, before that whole thing went down was it sounded like maybe he was going to even stay with Toronto. And That's give what us I a thought. Whole another go thing. Down, yeah. And they were going to give him the bag. But uh, yeah, big twos. Um, I, I was surprised to see not only Kawhi go to the Clippers, but also Paul George. Um, this also created rumblings of Westbrook wanting out um so it sounds like possible suitors for a west westbrook trade that hasn't happened speculation only is uh, a miami or even a new york nick so that's only speculation but i think for me some of the biggest winners um 
Yeah, I think the Clippers. Look at look at that. Look gotta at that be, team, right? dude. They were in the with, playoffs last year, and then you with, get Kawhi and Paul George. With Beverly, be so the they've got winner. the offense. They've got the defense. Yep. You've got the claw. You know, you've got Paul George coming off of a shoulder injury, and I believe he did have that repaired uh, in the off season. Um, so who knows what to expect there? But Lakers aren't the only team in LA now. And this been- has not happened, dude. For any years that I've actually been a basketball fan. Well, so, so, I mean, the the Clippers started kind of making a little noise when they got Chris Paul, and they started yeah, kind of making they sure. started making some noise around yeah, the, that the time. The Blake Griffin. Yeah, Blake Griffin, Chris thing. Paul, Lob City, the whole, the, yeah. that whole era. Um, but then they've kind of fallen off since then. You know, Chris Paul went to the Rockets, and so it's not really been the same team. Now, oh, dude, can you imagine if they got KD back? Oh, the biggest reason I think KD didn't go there, I think KD is seriously on his own journey, dude. Yeah. I think he's on his own little sabbatical, and he just wants to find out. Do I like playing in the middle of the country? Do I like playing on the West? Do yeah. I like playing on the East? He's just trying. He's just playing with house money. He's got a couple rings. Getting his he's not pressing. He's not pressing to get championships. He's just like, where do I enjoy playing best? Where do I enjoy living best? What is best for my quality of life? And I think he's just kind of on a little sabbatical doing his own, doing his own thing, man. And it makes no sense on why you wouldn't stay, why you wouldn't stay in California and go to the Clippers. Right. It just doesn't make any sense to me on why you'd go, um, Team up with Kyrie. Kyrie's a hard person to play with, right. it sounds like as well. It doesn't it sounds like playing with another Russ. Yeah. Do you foresee like, that being a problem? I do. Yeah. I don't think that I don't think the Nets are going to be nearly as tight as everyone thinks. I don't think so either. Not we learned all. that with uh Kyrie, an experienced individual who has a championship under his belt, going to Boston. Mm-hmm. Look what he did with that crew. Yep. Supposedly the Celtics are are call Kyrie cancerous to that to that team, to that operation under that coach. Kyrie was not a good fit. Yeah, and it could be the same thing going into a young squad with Brooklyn. Honestly, I think <laughs> it's weird to say they would almost be better off if they just added KD because that they had a dude they had a young squad last year, hell of a good squad, really good young up and coming core. Yeah, and I was like, if they just added KD, they may be all right. Yeah, throwing KD and Kyrie, it might be a little too much for those guys. <laughs> yeah, they might have time a uh, hard time finding their role yeah. if stuff's not going good initially. Who knows how Kyrie's going to react? Yeah, the only good thing about that is you got a whole year without Durant. Totally. So you're going to have Kyrie for a year by himself to kind of hopefully get used to stuff. Yeah. But is he going to get used to stuff in a way that now makes it worse when yeah. KD comes back? See, the problem is Kyrie. The problem is Kyrie. Kyrie wants the team. He wants the ownership. He wants the team around him. Right. KD, however, we saw that in Golden State. He does. That's not necessary. KD's going to go out there and play his game. So whether they have time or not. You're still going to have the Kyrie problem. It's a Kyrie problem. It's not a Durant problem. Durant's going to go into a system just like he did in in, in Golden State and be able to find his niche. Yeah. He, you know, he always told he always said that it was Steph's team. It always was. And now Steph obviously is going to really have to get that identity up now with just the Splash Brothers left. And Iguodala is now no longer there. Iguodala was traded, and they're also actually going to retire his number. Do you see that? Yes. So that's cool, man. Yeah. Shout outs to him, dude. That guy did so much. They sh- yeah, they're retiring everyone's number. Retire my number over there at Golden State. Yeah, no doubt. Re- well, that's the guy you should be retiring his number. The fact they're retiring Kevin Durant's number yeah. after three seasons there, you're retiring a guy, who cares if you won two championships? Right. You, if you would have won three and swept it, I'd, even, I'd say, eh, all right. He was there three years, you got three ships. Yeah. I get it. The fact that you won two championships and the guy was only there three years, Yeah, it's not that special. A lot of people win two championships. Why are you put? Why are you retiring the guy's number? Yeah, totally. That makes no sense. Did you see uh, KD's changing his number to number seven? No, going I to didn't. the Nets. I didn't see. And that. And nobody really knows. That was leaked yesterday. He's doing the, the LA, jump. huh? Wow. He's going with the LA for sure. Interesting. So, uh, or the D Brown, huh? Why? Do you, any, any significance to seven? Or? Nobody really oh, knows. No. I think there's a little speculation, but nobody really knows why he's doing that. Yeah. Okay. So I like I like the clips. I'm with you, Pat Beverly adding uh, adding the claw to them, dude, and, and still having Lou Williams' dog come off the bench. BG. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Sweet Lou off the bench. So they're definitely number one. I'd say the Bucks. Yeah. And the Bucks didn't even do anything, dude. The Bucks didn't gain any pieces. Yeah. They lost a piece. Malcolm Brogdon went uh, was lost. But other than that, I mean, you still got Giannis. Yeah. I just th- I just think the East is a little weak. Uh, people could argue that the 76ers, uh, and I would maybe argue that if Ben Simmons gets his jump shot. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> but, shit. Uh, but I, I still think the Bucks are, are the team to beat in the East. Definitely, There's dude. No they, doubt. they were... Uh, Toronto's out of the East. Yeah, what are you going to do? Dude, those guys. Talk about... Do you think they make the playoffs next year? 
with Mark Gasol, Kyle Lowry, and, Sa- and, and Pascal Siakam, and your boy Van Fleet. <laughs> oh, and Van Vliet. I forgot. I forgot I, about Van Vliet. You know, I, 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 I don't know, man. I, I don't think so. Interesting, right? I mean, they could be. They, they, they might not even make it to the playoffs. The East is just so not as good uh, right. when it comes to obviously comparing it to the Western Conference. Uh, so they, they have a chance, but I, I, I think it's faint. It's crazy to me that uh, that they did, dude. There's nothing you could have done if you're Toronto. Yeah, they did absolutely everything right. You took the chance. You brought in Kawhi. You tried to wow him. You tried to give him the bag. You tried to give him the good experience. You got rid of DeMar Rosen to make this work. Right. Right. I mean, they did everything they could do, dude. I, I almost just feel bad I too. for Toronto because it's like, what more yeah. could you have done? It, it reminds me of Denver, dude. Like, if we didn't have the young core we did and we were living the same game they're living where you have some young players, but then you're trying to lure a couple stars in for the last year or two years of their deal. Yeah. You know they're not going to stay. If a championship and the way you treated him and the in the six and Jurassic Park and all that stuff, including a ring, yeah. didn't get him to stay. Yeah. What what would we be able to do in here in Denver to make a, a high price free agent stay? Like what yeah. would we be able to do? You know, that's why I feel so good uh, about the position that we're in. Oh, dude, we're in a great position. Yeah. Even people coming off injuries, uh, bringing Bobo on, you know, we'll see if he can get his shit together, yep. stay healthy. Number one. And, you know, get that basketball mindset, uh, back that he originally had that I think he lost a little bit of. Um, I think we're in a great spot now with the two LA teams. Um, who, you know, who wins the West this year? Um, what's your forecast on the that? Clippers Clippers? Yeah. I don't think LeBron, yeah. I don't like that Lakers squad at all. I don't think they have enough. That's exactly what I think, dude. I, I don't think they have enough. Well, here's the thing. It's not that they don't have enough, but yeah. if you have any guys go down, how do you have to keep your, you have to keep your starting five healthy the whole season, dude, because yeah. their bench is so terrible. It's a long There's season. There's nothing left, right? <laughs> nothing. Exactly. Then you're talking about games, or you're talking about guys wanting to play 60 games now, yeah. 61 games, yeah. and sit 20, 22 games. Is, Come on. Is JaVel McGee going to get you, get you that next level? McGee. Is he going to get you that next level? No. Probably not. Caldwell Pope. Is, is a broken down re-signing of Rondo for another two years going to be the best one option that you have? I, I don't know. Kuzma? He's old. What about Danny Green going out there? Danny Green, I like. I like that pick. I like, I like that pick. I think they that's needed great. that. They needed, they needed that, that for that sure. Big time. He's what? He, is he a three? I don't know. Three or four. I don't know where they had him playing. I think. I think. I think he's a great three. I think the. Um, but LeBron's a three. That's a, that, well. That's kind of the conflict there. And same thing. Like it's going to be very interesting to see how you get uh, Demarcus Cousins yeah. going over there to the Lakers. Yeah. How do you rotate the ball between him, Davis, LeBron, and then you got these young guys you're trying to groom. Yeah. You're trying they don't you know they're gonna feel weird with the ball in their hands when you got those three playing. Yeah, no doubt. That just that would feel super weird to me as a young player. I wouldn't feel confident shooting. Yeah. I wouldn't feel feel like I know when to shoot, when not totally. to shoot. I don't know. I like the A D and Boogie mix because they had that New Orleans, uh that that little ride with New Orleans. But uh yeah, I just I, I think there's there's yeah, too many big heads. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it works. We're gonna have to cut it off, dude. We got to jump into um, the sneakers and fashion and YouTube comments. Let's uh, let's do YouTube comments first, okay. just so I can kind of um, gauge where we're at on time. Because uh, we do we have quite a bit of stuff for sneakers. Not really. Okay. No. We'll do you want to do that first then, or do you want to do the comments? Which which um, we do? I think we can knock out sneakers within seven ten minutes. Okay. Let's let's do sneakers do that? then. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. All right. Cool. Uh, All so right. first things first. So we talked about Vegas, and obviously I went to the undefeated. So I wanted you both to be able to kind of see these uh, new. Uh, newly designed and redesigned, I would say, 1.0 undefeated Ultra Boost. I think they're pretty sick. Hell yeah. Let's check them out, dude. I'm excited to see these joints. I looked at them. Uh, this is a, looked like in photos, looked like a Raider yeah. fan's dream. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, Jeff Kirby's yeah, no doubt. here. here. <laughs> First mistake, I think, uh, again, having Normal the basic box. basic box. But you know, price goes up. We could have been looking at 230 250 for a different price. Because I, I talked to the guy at Undefeated. I said, man, first thing I said, I got to say, you're, t- you're taxing me 220 on this, and you're giving me the basic Ultra Boost right. yellow box. What did he say? He's like, it could have been more. It oh, been, they could have charged more? It could have been more yeah, money yeah, yeah. then. No I'm doubt. like, well, I don't know. I don't like this box. But <laughs> basic, this is the well. basic, basic bitch box. And here is the shoe. So first looks... I'm I thought you take the, a look at that first. I thought the uh, undefeated was going to be more silver. Okay, I thought it with, is definitely not. Yep, I thought with the uh, with the way that I saw them on social media, and maybe it was people taking pictures with their flash because the because the three M three M. Yep, it just looked like they were going to be a brighter silver. Right, right. So this 
this pair, this is actually pretty, these are actually really pretty dope, dude. Like, yeah, this is a pair that I would cop. I wasn't going to cop uh, because I thought it was silver. Uh huh. And I was like, yeah, I just don't need that. Now you don't know. Need that Raider love in my life. But it's not really that way. It is not. It's kind of so, like a really, really dark gray. Yeah. So it's not a Raider's dream. That's what's nice. So I'm glad you actually said that. Um, but you have three M on the tongue. You have three M on the undefeated. And I believe the back writing on the pool tab. Did you notice the pool tab? Yeah. Yes. I love the pool tab. New. Dude, I love the pool tab, especially with the 1.0 because they are very very tough to get ah, your foot so in you right so the 1.0 is really tough but that's what makes them so comfortable as well that neoprene just really locks you in so having that pool tab super sick i like aesthetically i i, I like the aesthetic look of that pool tab i really do and then having that looks good yeah having that 3m and then you also have the atr t uh taping stripping yeah stripping on the actual toe box so um i think that looks really really good with this shoe especially with the black boost looks like um, a haven the toe box totally reminds me of the Haven Ultra yeah, Boost. It does look like a Haven. But uh, no, I'm really happy with it. The matte black cage, the matte black heel cups, the black on black Ultra Boost, the black boost, the undefeated on the insole, super subtle, super, subtle, super easy, uh, 3M. I was going to bring my uh, my 1.0 triple blacks that yeah. I have yeah. uh, and show you. But dude, there are three to four major differences on this shoe versus that. So they're not the same. Ah. They don't look the Let's same. Let's shoot a review for that then. Yeah, we should. Because they don't have the ATR stripping on it. Uh, they don't have the 3M, obviously hits on either the tongue or the undefeated logo. Um, today, let's shoot a uh, comparison video. I think we should. Yeah. That'll but be I, down. You don't have work today. Yeah, correct. Let's do it. Let's do it. But I think this is worth it. I like the shoe. JJ, what do you think real quick? Dope. He's got the flashlight really like out. He's peeping the um, insole. The I was just M. trying to understand what the pull tab said, but it's in the inside of the shoe, so that's dope. And now that I see um, JJ with the flash out, that undefeated uh, branding on the front is it pops crazy. Super nice. One uh, when you have the light on it. No wonder it was looking the way it was on social media. Yeah, um, yeah it, it just it brightens yeah. up immensely. It goes super three M once it you does. put the. Wasn't uh, there flash a white pair too? Uh, not this go around. The white pair. They're, you talking about the red and the white and the blue? No, nah, that was like it was already a. Separate yeah, that release. was. They, and they're on sale, by the way. Yeah, one fifty four shipped right now. Yeah, oh, okay. For those, but that was yeah, that was a while back. But uh, that would have been a good Fourth of July pair. Yeah, personally, I would rather have those, but these are pretty dope. Yeah, and one of them has uh, glue stains. I think it's JJ on the backside. The other one though, right shoe. Which yeah, the other one we usually yeah. know that glue stains are pretty bad on triple blacks, but on this shoe, really good. That one so on the, the right shoe's side. good. The left shoe's got glue stains. Yeah, you got some glue stains okay. on there. So be aware. You know, pairs are going to differentiate a little bit with that. Always love that for two twenty. Yeah, Always no a big doubt, fan right? of that. Oh, yeah. um, the other thing I wanted to show you, I got it the day we did our last cast, which was a long time ago. So it's kind of old. But we showed the the keychain version. But here's the full version. Oh yeah, dude. We need to uh, the yeah. Super yeah. Soaker Fifty, my friend. Ooh, Dallas, are you planning on taking this out of the box? Uh, or are you just collecting? I can, but I, I don't mind collecting either. But dude, resale is not that much. So dude, if we're gonna if, if we've got a sick video that we can come up with that beats Eric Whiteback's uh, I don't know about fire, a video. no, it's not gonna be that. Yeah. I mean, I don't video. Okay. I just want to I just want to block out the Supreme. No, oh, we talked about that. Are you willing to take the gun out of the box? But are you willing to paint Supreme white like the letters? The, like oh, and like do, it should be and do a video like how it should have been done. Yes, I don't know about a video. I just thought it'd be tied to like <laughs> you could do some, could photos, some photos, holding it up with it, yeah. and it just looks differently, you know. Yeah, because I would actually make all this Supreme writing white like yeah. it should right. have been, right. like the keychain got it right there. Yeah, but I don't want to mess up your collecting going on, like you. You know, that's something you're going to keep up. Uh, I'll do it for the cause. Man cave. I'll do it for I the cause. I feel like it would be better that way. Just do it saying. for the what? I'd do it for the cause, not the cause for Oh, the cause. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> cause, not the cause. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Not the clause. First, I thought you were saying <laughs> cast, but I thought you were doing it in a British accent. Do it for the cost. I'll do it for the cost. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was like, I see where you're going yeah, with I, that. Was I was trying oh, yeah, to pick yeah, up I what like, you were doing, I, but you weren't doing anything. So I was trying <laughs> to pick up nothing. <laughs> I'll uh, take that L on the way I'll out. I'll take that. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's good to have this. Um, we'll decide what we want to do with it. I don't mind deboxing it. The box uh, is a little smashed on the bottom side, anyways. Right, uh, directly from Supreme, but still, Sick. I'm just glad to have a super soaker. A super soaker. Yeah, not a super soaper. <laughs> super soaker. If super you put soap soaper. in this, it would be a super soaper. Super and soaper. It would not be good. Yeah, that might be a good video for you. So, yeah. Aside nice. from that, uh, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was the major release uh, this week. The Lundmarks. Of course. Um, Foot Locker, it's open right now. I am. I, I do have my nine-minute head start. I might go by and check in, get the 10-minute. Just so we can look at them. Um, 
if you got into the finish line raffle, you should see uh, if you won, like, right now. Yeah. If you check it. Um, I got the dang. Of course. Our boy Muzz got the cool. Come pick it up. What? So we'll have a Lundmark, even if we don't get him. Is he shopping at fo- at a finish line all of a sudden? How did uh, he get in? I don't know. What is this guy doing? This guy's doing some IT stuff from the back. He definitely doesn't have my platinum points. Unbelievable, dude. So uh, he actually won. So we'll have our first, like, one of our first wins off of the finish line raffle uh, just happened. So that's cool. But uh, I do have the head start ready to go. Um, I'm not going to do the SNS raffles and all these other raffles, man. If I get it by getting it one source, great. I'd love to look at it. But um, I don't I don't foresee myself keeping it. And I don't. Need, I'm not even trying to get trying to get it to make money. I just want to see it. Yeah, I think it's got some more cream hits that I would. I want like to see him see. in person because I can't tell shit from these terrible stock photos the that he worst. just continues to release on these Easies. They're the worst. Every one of them looks the same, or yeah. they look super similar. I can't tell what anything looks like by itself until I see fools getting it in hand and posting it on Twitter. Adidas, can you please do a little better? Do something to make me want the shoe. Right? Are you guys trying to sell shoes at all? Like, what are you doing over there these days? Nice Hold box, on. by the way, Adidas. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dallas. Oh, damn. The shoe just fell. I basically just hit Dallas's Adidas uh, box and knocked his brand new Ultra Boost onto the floor. All I got to say, all I got to say is below not good. I'm sorry, Dallas. Um, so below those not good. So those come out this Saturday. Now, there is rumor, uh, excuse me, the Reflectives coming out July 11th. Mm. So if you fools are trying to get Reflectives, because I don't give a shit. Don't, yeah, care. don't care. Yeah. So if you guys want them, put you on a little game. Uh, expect Yeezy Supply to be uh, doing a, a, a shock drop somewhere on the 11th, probably uh, maybe even the 10th, like anywhere from 11 p.m. all the way into 4 a.m., uh, which would equate to the 11th. I would probably expect something there. But again, I don't know that for sure. But uh, keep your eyes open for those fools that want the reflectives. For sure. I'd like to have a pair just to do a video and show people what the differences are between yeah. A, a Yeezy static and then a Lundmark and, you know, just kind of show them, Hey, here's your, here's your non-reflective here's like here's, side yeah. to side. Yeah. You know, cause I can't tell and I guarantee other people feel the same way. Right. Can't tell what's what from Adidas. So yeah, not a crazy amount of sneakers dropping, yeah. um, uh, this week. I, I don't even think from what I've looked at, it's not even been this cra- for, uh, it's not even that crazy this month. Mm-hmm. I was expecting those Michigan fives to drop August 10th. They already dropped. I was out of town. They're not even Michigan fives. Mm-mm. They're Inspire fives. Inspire fives. No Michigan logo on them. All they are None. is Mace. So it's funny. Nike marketed them as Michigan fives the whole time, and they changed the name a week before to Inspire fives, and they pushed the drop up a month. Yeah. Oh, because they realized we don't have anything else going on? Yeah. Is that why? Because Stranger Things didn't do so well. I get, yeah, that, dude, that was a that, terrible dude, package. That, that collab sucks. Terrible. If you, uh, and I know you haven't been that's watching terrible. the episodes because you're not interested, but dude, they haven't wore any any Nikes. Yeah. It's all been Reeboks and Adidas. Interesting. I don't oh, understand. Shit. It is right. stupid. So interesting. But anyways, that's all I got that's for that. That's awful. So I'm cool, doing man. my sneakers and fashion. Yeah, let's uh, let's oh, move into the... Go I'll have a sick pair uh, to look at on Thursday's cast. Oh, And nice. I won't tell anybody what they are, but they're, they're a pair of Nikes. They're going to be sick. Nice. All right. We'll look forward to it. You'll have them by the next show, you said? Yeah. Well, I just got to restock on the... Uh, oh, tomorrow on sneakers. Jordan 4, Black Cement, restock. Bread Force, restocking on sneakers tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. The Bread Force? Yeah. Mm. Again? I already, already got two pairs. <laughs> yep. A restocking okay. tomorrow for our friends. I want to know. Uh, let's see here. YouTube comments. Dude, kind of light on the comments this week. Um, ah, people are busy. Well, yeah, exactly. Holiday weeks was actually, this is good for us because we're going way too long. We didn't get to uh, hit on some of the stuff, but yo, what up homies? This is from the Philly mayor starting this off. First off, welcome back. Seems like we haven't had a cast in forever. Although TTF did ramp up the Instagram content. We saw how you rocked the blazers at the wedding, a crazy demolition derby that even had RVs to almost plunging to his death along with his girl at a canyon wearing Jordan ones was great content on IG. I know the last cast you were talking about AEW and ECW and Paul Heyman. Some of the greatest memories I have as a teenager was going to the bingo hall on the weekends where ECW started in Philadelphia. Paul Heyman running the show. This was some of the craziest wrestling imaginable. From the original gangster, New Jack coming out, to Dr. Dre, natural born killers with the trash can full of weapons, to Sabu having barbed wire match with Terry Funk. ECW was amazing because of... It, because the bingo hall was so small and they would always come through the crowd fighting. They would grab a chair out of your hand and hit the other guy. Paul Heyman created a great experience. Hopefully he can create some of that again with WWE. However, 
AEW seems to be the organization that is now catering to us from the Attitude Era. Can't wait to see how many people decide to leave WWE and join AEW. Dude, let me hit on this for a second. I uh, I thought the same thing, man. I think, um, first of all, I didn't even think uh, about you living in Philly and being able to go to the OG ECW arena where the shit started at. I'm super, super jealous because I remember when I first heard of ECW, my parents were not letting me get close to that. I was having me and my brother were scrambling the cable channel. Like it was old school porn trying to watch ECW pay-per-view so we could see what the hell's going on. Hmm. Cause you heard about Terry Funk and Cactus Jack and Sabu and Sandman doing all this craziness that you were not seeing in WWE especially in the 90s, WWE was all character driven. Right. Everyone had a character, everyone had a persona. So, um, dude, I cannot wait to see what happens. AEW has signed a full-time TV deal with Turner Broadcasting Network, the same company that went head to head with Vince McMahon, with, w, uh, with WCW in the 90s, to take you know, that created the whole Monday Night Wars. AEW has now signed a contract with the same company, Ted Turner, um, TNT, TBS, all that stuff. I cannot wait to see what happens. If they come out and they go head to head, they decide to go head to head because they're going to launch a primetime TV show in the fall. Right now, they're only doing pay per views. So they're just dropping a couple events to get the promote the brand and get it bigger. They also have a bunch of old school WWE stars at the head of the AEW company. So when they launch in the fall, dude, if they go head to head with Monday Night Raw, I'm going to be like a little kid. I, that's must-see TV. The Monday Night Wars are coming back, and you have something that is directly competing with Vince McMahon and WWE, and that's making them um, change their product and making them feel a little bit of that. Uh, I don't know how much of a drop in ratings. I don't know exactly what it's going to do to them, but competition's always good, mm -hmm. and especially in the wrestling business. The wrestling business is always better when there's competition. Yeah. Always better when there's competition. So I'm really, really excited about it, and I hope they go Monday nights. Some people I've heard saying it's going to be Wednesday nights, um, but nothing's been officially announced yet. Dude, if they go Mondays, that's the way to do it. If you guys are all in, if you're really trying to make this wrestling promotion work, and you're really trying to be the best of the best, then, then compete against the best of the best. I want to see it on Monday nights against WWE. That would be awesome, man. Uh, on to women's. He can, finishes up here. Or actually not finishes, he continues up. On to women's USA national team. It was great seeing these ladies win another World Cup. That being said, TTF, last cast, you said they did not really, uh, they're not really that dominant. Let's be real. I think you were looking at World Cup info because the women's USA team has won nine world or nine gold cups since 91, Olympic gold 96, 2004, 2008, and 2012, and finally the World Cup in 91, 99, and 2015, and this year's. I mean, that's pretty dominant in my book. I just wanted to share the knowledge and love of watching women's national team. It's not too hard when the team always has some dime pieces on the roster. Mm. My man. No, I think, um, yeah, maybe I misspoke. I think I was just saying they, they should dominate. They, the, the rest of the world is dog shit when it comes to soccer. A lot of the world doesn't even allow their women to leave the house. They stay at home. They're a stay-at-home mom. So, I mean, the fact that our women are beating the shit out of every other soccer team across the world is not really that much of a surprise. And they should, they should win everything every year. You know what I mean? Like, our, the, the access to soccer that our young people, our young women have growing up in this country I would venture to say it's not even close to similar in other countries. Maybe you have a few competitors. You have Sweden. You have Netherlands who was there. But overall, I think there's probably six teams that can compete, not 16 or 20 teams that they put in the tournament. There's only six that are really competitive. The rest of them are not good at all. And that's kind of what I was uh, – that's kind of what I was saying. I think I maybe said it in a, a weird roundabout way. Sorry. Uh, TTF, did you see Stevie Wonder at the last show? Said he was stopping the tour so he can get a kidney transplant in November. Yep. And he already has a donor lined up. I did see that. I saw the... Um, my girl actually showed me we were on, when we were on vacation. She's like, yo, look at this. Check this shit out. I was like, damn, that's crazy. But just like I said, man, you got to get out to see these legends regardless uh, of the venue or wherever. They, if they're coming to your city, man, you got to get out and see them. Uh, lastly, can we get a Dow collection video? We know this guy sits on some heat and keeps a lot DS, but I feel like <laughs> it would be a great video because he's not only shoes and old toys and skate decks because he not only has shoes, but old toys and skate decks. Just throwing the idea out there. Have a great week, homies. Plug out. Philly plug tons in there. Dow, nice. you want to react to any of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind if that's what somebody wants to see. Uh, I've got, I've got a lot to offer. I, I am a collector and if you want if you want me to be a little bit more specific, yeah, I mean, I've got 
60, 65 skate decks. Um, you know, some are hung up, some aren't, some need to be hung up, uh, you know, shoes, whatever you guys want, man, I, I'd be open to it. So yeah, hit, hit me oh, up. Are you talking about a uh, plug? Let me know too. Are you talking about a YouTube video? Like for the channel? Yeah. Uh, just come over sneaker shopping at Dow's house. Sneaker shopping with Dow. Dow Dow's going to, once this video hits 10 K Dow's going to donate a pair of shoes out of this collection to a lucky commenter. One of those type videos. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're thinking? Uh, anyway, it's Philly plug. Thanks for coming through my man. Uh, Dan up next best NBA off season ever shuffle the deck two all-stars to each team. Who's going to be legendary yep. thoughts on the new Adidas consortium 4d mid white retail was a whopping $500, but in my size, 11 it's falling down to around 350 is identical to the kith aspens just a different colorway mm -hmm. worth the money what do you think del uh actually saw it uh saw it in hand uh, at, at the undefeated store uh it's a great shoe and it's a little lighter weight than a lot of my other 4ds oh, so really? I, I was pumped on that okay. so maybe obviously innovation and some of that design is changing and it's getting better uh, but it is not worth 500 whatsoever uh that pattern is clean it's very neutral very easy to wear um, there's also some greens in it which is really really nice uh that being said I tweeted out, so if you're on me, and I know you just mentioned 350, but if you're on my socials, or follow my socials, um, I think it was proper LBC over the holiday, had it uh, with a discount code that equaled up to 350. I think that shoe's worth 350 any day of the week. Um, I actually didn't buy it because I was I, I had to pay for a trip to Vegas. Uh, otherwise, I would have bought that, but that shoe is absolutely not worth 500 by any stretch of any imagination. But 350. 350, I think you is pay. a good price. With the, is it all? Is it all the all white shoe? It's not all white. It's it's got like some greens and some like subtle different colors. But uh, the pattern is super nice. It is very soft, very stretchy knit. Um, I think it's a great shoe, and it is lighter than any of my four Ds that I currently own, which are four. So um, three three fifty. Oh yeah, it's just the lighter Kith Aspen pattern. Yeah, yeah. correct. So it's Dude, not I, it's not the Graspin. It's even lighter than the Graspin. Was that initially dropped as a friends and family? Uh, no, there is one similar to this that was okay, but not not in this silhouette. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, dude, I, that's a shoe. Yeah, I don't know if I'd pay five for it. Three fifty would be cool, but st then again, I mean, it's another shoe that's very hard to style. It's yeah. good in the summer. It's good with shorts, but there's not a lot. I mean, it's those, it's a shoe, those, you gotta, those mids are tough. Yep, you got to take uh, some time to make it look good. But it's I am a, I am the easy. mid god, so I, I do need that shoe. I eventually. am the mid god. <laughs> I am the mid god. Uh, he finished or he um. Continues along here. Thanks for the surprise shout out. My boy T-Mobile hooked me up big with a rare pair of had my eyes on for a hot minute. My first pair of Asics, the Gel Light 3 Monsoon Patrol, a Japanese collab with snap-on nylon lace covers that match the toe box. Actually pretty sick. Keep up the stellar work, fools. Ain't no better time than summertime. Appreciate it, my man Dan coming through. Glad you got the birthday gift. I'm looking at this pair right now. Dan, those are ridiculous looking. What are those? Those are so crazy, dude. What are those? Dude, they got, like he said, snap-on lace covers. Have you seen those? No. Uh, what are they called? All right, check it out. Asics Google what? Asics Gel Light 3 Monsoon Patrol. Check that out, dude. These are, wow. I don't think I could pull these off. Crazy, though. Got them straps. Got them straps. Ooh. My homie Joey's mad into Asics. He'd probably love these. Uh, Look at these, dude. Do you see them? Uh, hold on. Is it the gel three light that's messing you up? Because light spelled L Y T E. No, I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Monsoon Patrol. What color are they? They're like green. They're like a, a dark tortoise. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand. Yeah, it's like a the lace covers. Are, are those the gel light Donatellos? Tur dude, those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle collab. I don't that's, understand. That's the thing. The turtle shell comes off the laces. It's snap on. Weird. Do you see any pictures without it? It's like a it's like a catcher's catcher's mitt or catcher's like no, no, cover. No. Oh yeah, yeah, like a you know what it reminds me of chest protector. Ninja Turtles is good. Yeah. It also reminds me of the long tongue on baseball cleats that comes up and then they fold over oh, your yeah. lace other, over the top of your laces. Totally. Uh, I don't know if baseball cleats still are like that. I haven't bought baseball cleats since I was a kid, but I think without the snap they're all right. But that snap's weird. Isn't this a crazy pair? I could imagine these yeah. being heat though. They look like a shoe that would sit in a collection. It doesn't look like a shoe that you know. It looks like a collection type day. shoe. Yeah, dude, because they're so out there. Yeah. They're out there, bruh. They're an insane they're shoe. Extreme hiking shoes, it looks like. My man Dan getting hooked up for his birthday. I want to do a 
Yeah, yeah I, wanted to, I wanted to peep those. Dan, uh, I'm glad you like them catcher's mitts. <laughs> the catcher's Dude, mitts. No, like the cap, sleeping the, bag. It's, it's not even the mitts. The it's, Asics it, chest protector joints. It's the che- it's, yeah, it's the baseball protector joints. The Asics baseball it chest protectors. Like the shoe's wearing a sleeping bag. The Asics shoes wearing the Asics sleeping bags. Sleeping bags. There you go. Yeah, got it. Uh, my man Hayden up next. Another solid cast, guys. I'm a newer listener, and this cast helps me make it through the work day a lot easier. Your chemistry with each other is one of the best, and it shows with the quality of the cast. Sneaker question: With the flood of Jordan ones over the past year or two, what is the model that stands out to you, and what sleeper pair do you think has potential to become a more desired pair in the future? And he's talking about Jordan ones. Out of the Jordan ones that have Man come Hayden, out, give him a shot. What's up? So he's talking about out of Jordan ones. Uh, he said, with the flood of Jordan ones over the past year or two, okay. what is one model that stands out to you? I think he means okay. So he's talking about Jordan ones. I think he means colorway, not model. Yeah, which colorway stands out to you of the Jordan uh, ones? And what sleeper pair do you think has potential to become more desired in the future? Mm. Uh, so for me, and I don't own the pair yet because there's been so many things come up, but uh, I think the price will only rise as time goes on. Um, the Nigel Sylvester's. I think that's a super, super dope pair. I think it's cool. And and my thing is because I, I come from the BMX. That's one that stands out to you? Yes, that, that stands out to me. And I think that'll rise in value as the years go on. So that's a great pair to pick up if you haven't. I'd pick that that pair. But I'm also a BMX head at heart. So for me, the way that you know he designed it to on the the wearing of the shoes, um, the wear points that equal how he messes up shoes um, when he rides. There's just so many great concepts to it, and the quality of the leather is actually pretty decent as well. Um, plus, it's from Jordan bmx co so it's that jordan bmx bike co i think that's cool uh that will rise in value and that's one that stands out to me i'm gonna say um the lh to chicago's that's gonna be a pair that just continues to rise yeah if you want that pair buy them now it's gonna be a, just like the lance mountains yeah. just like any of the other pairs that have something cool about them which this obviously the removable paint mm-hmm. um they always rise in price they're always going to rise in price because people want to buy them to do customs. People just want to have them in the collection. People want two pairs. They want one to keep in the collection DS. They want one to customize. People may be messed up on their initial customization. They want to buy another one to make them better because they care about what everyone thinks on the internet, which you shouldn't do. And if you yeah. do, there's one of those for you because who gives a shit about people on the internet that don't know you? That was a random tangent, but it doesn't yeah. matter. So here we go, my man Hayden. Cop the LA to Chicago's. Dude. Yeah. That's going to be a pair that's going to go up. And it's not necessarily a sleeper right now, but at the price they're at right now, I think that's going to be a sleeper. Yeah. They're going to be over five, six, seven hundred dollars $700 in a year or two. You're going to be paying double yeah. to get that shoe. Especially as you see the Lakers, as their team gets more and more dominant, as it will, um, I think. Um, as they I learn, agree, yeah. As, as they learn how to play together and that kind of thing, that shoe, again, people are going to be looking for it. So that's a model that really stands out to me over the past year or two. Um, and I know that's pretty recent. But uh, that's one that I would say that you should cop right now. Mm -hmm. Um, So Nigel Sylvester stands out to you. What about a sleeper? What do you think is a sleeper? Ooh, a sleeper. Um, And the Jordan ones. For me, I would say like a super, as far as just a sleeper, just a pair you should definitely get in your collection. Not a lot of hype around them. That might be hyped later on. Turbo Greens. I just went hiking in them. I've been wearing them around. I actually think Mike the Compass just did a video on those saying those are one of the hardest Jordan ones of the year so far or the hardest. And coincidentally, yeah, we just agree on it. Uh, I did the lace swap. I put the off-white laces in my pair. But those turbo greens are so sick, dude. Yeah, I love the turbo greens. I love the turbo greens. And I, for me, if you want just a little bit better quality than turbo greens um, that are the quintessential fall shoe, Jordan 1, rookie of the years. Rookies. Rookies are good. Or yeah. Those are dope. Mm-hmm. Plus, you can put the red laces in there. You can go black on those. Um, I think that's a good quality shoe. Um, it's also got the the unattached sides, which are cool, so you can see the accolades underneath. I think he. I think that answers the shoe. question perfectly because I think that is a sleeper that will be more desired. Yeah. In the future. Yep. I could see the, that being the rookie becoming um, ro- the rookie of the year becoming that shoe. Sorry, especially when fall hits oh, this bet. year. Thanksgiving time. Fall, Huge. Great shoe. Um, Hayden, man, thank you, dog. I'm going to give you uh, another shot there. Thank you for uh, joining in on the cast and the conversation. I know there's a lot of people listening to this show that have never left a comment. That's how easy it is, man. It's how easy it is to get involved in the convo. Let us know that you listen. And uh, so, yeah, thanks for coming through, man. I appreciate you. My man, Matthew Jones, up next. Great cast, guys. Top five on YouTube. Wow. 100 with the emoji. Thank you. 
Appreciate it, bro. Landing up next. Don't worry, Dow. I think those Missoni Ultra Boosts are dope. I would love to see more of an re in-depth review slash on feed of those. Also, sending String Scene to work for StockX is a must. A small sacrifice to bring so much content to the cast. If he's working in Arizona at 125 degrees, he'll need those climbers. So Boost can't be dead with the laughing emoji. <laughs> also, oh I'm a gosh. huge soccer fan and I need that jersey. He's talking about the off-white oh, yeah. joint. Jersey's yep. fire. Super sick. Yeah, I wish, dude. I wish we had a plug for uh, Stringstein at StockX. That would just be incredible. Be the best. Uh, the homie T-Mobile up next. I got married a couple years ago, and me and the homie Dan, who was my best man, all wore chucks, even my wife and one-year-old daughter. They were a gift to my wedding uh, they were a gift to the wedding party, along with some other cool matching accessories. It made for amazing pictures. He actually sent me a bunch of photos. I haven't even looked. Dude, my DMs are so wrecked. Mm -hmm. I got to go through and check them out. He said that, uh, or he sent me the pictures of the wedding and stuff. Like, yeah, all his groomsmen oh, and the chucks tight. and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super dope. I couldn't do chucks. They hurt the shit out of my toes for some yeah, reason. Yeah, dude. I'd I be struggling. I don't, I don't have little kid arches anymore. <laughs> right. I've got, I've got grown man arches. I can't wear them. You can't do chucks either. No way. Man, T-Mobile coming through. Appreciate it, dog. I got to check those out uh, t later today, man. I'm going to go through and clean up my DMs. Uh, the homie Baker in next. Another fire cast. Can't wait to see the adventures of StockX in, with, or StockX Steen in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> StockX Steen. StockX Steen. Oh, great. Uh, wow. Norwal Music up next. I have a great time watching your videos. Thumbs up, heart, and a gold medal with the number one. All right. Bang. Thanks, Norwal. My man John up next. Uh, what's happening, lads? Great cast as always. I'm from Ireland, and you guys have me dying with the Irish impressions. <laughs> I'll give you some fucking credit. Give them some fucking <laughs> credit. I mean, for real. For trying though. Wish you fools a happy or wish you fools a great Fourth of July, Ireland to Colorado with the big flex. Nice, my man John. Appreciate you coming through, dog. As always, Eric in next. Take the shades off, bro. Trying too hard. S M H. Huh, must be talking to the goat over here, Stringer. Must be here. Yeah, must be new. Why are you trying so hard, man? Mm -hmm. Why are you trying know, so hard dude. to be the host? I don't, I don't understand. Know, man. Uh, let's see. Britain up next. Best comment ever goes to drum roll. I don't have a drum roll. Damn it. That's, oh, that's close. Shot. That's a rim shot. Dal, you made me blush. No homo. <laughs> but I like homos. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Fellas, have a great 4th of July. Look forward to the next ca next cast. TTF, hit me about those climos you're going to move. And JJ said, never said shit to you before. So, hi, with the laughing emoji. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Way to include the string. So funny. Hi. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, next up, my man Jovan. Wait, is it Jovan or Jovan or maybe, Hovan? Maybe it's Bro Hovan. Hovan. Ah, I can't remember. Dog, <laughs> remind me one more time next time in the comments. I'm going to remember it this time. Jovan, Hovan, Brovan. <laughs> remind me, dog. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, he says, Tizite Podcast, fellas, as always. Wow. It's been a long minute since I left a comment on your show. Keep up the great work with two thumbs up emojis. Your homie, Jovan. Dude, let me know how to pronounce your name. Don't make it a long time since you leave another comment so I can know what's up here. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, gosh, can't believe I had a brain fart with that. But uh, thanks for coming through, dog. Appreciate you as always. My man AP coming through. Happy uh, or congratulations on getting married. TTF, you can wear whatever I want you want to my wedding. I did already. As long as you bring me a size 15 easy as a wedding gift will be good. Loving the cast, fellas. Stringstein cracks me up. Can't wait to see him working for StockX and AZ sweating his ass off and reporting back. <laughs> Dal, oh, oh. or should I say Joe Dirt? <laughs> Love all your input and talking about your relationship really helps give some perspective and ideas on how I can be a better fiance slash husband. Also killer mullet, man. Going to have a gift coming to the cast for you guys soon as TTF gives me the right address and some MUP logos. Dow, try those sushi burritos in Vegas. As a Kansas brethren, I can tell you, you won't be disappointed. Rock chalk. God bless y'all. Happy 4th of July. AP. Fire. I think we just end the cast there. There you go, dude. A fellow Kansas brethren speaking the facts like that. No doubt. End it. End it. Just cut the show off. AP, we're best friends. You don't even know it. <laughs> hey, that means you can go in for half on his wedding gift for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. not even go to the wedding and have a party fun like you guys yeah, did. Just it's all right. You had a you had a good time, guys. What you do you know some... about a party fun? That was weird. I don't I, know why yeah, I, I said that. I don't <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and had a party fun. <laughs> have weird. a party fun. <laughs> Uh, my man JJ's kicks up next. What up T and D? 
Jay, straight from LA, representing Keep Casting Fellas with the deuces. Appreciate you, Jay. Always coming through. Mm -hmm. The homie to Monday Mid Soul up next. Man, you guys keep getting better. Firecast and great job on the PG uh, PG thirteen content nice. with the fist up and the great job or the okay. Uh, you know, I'm like, yeah. Monday Mid Soul. Appreciate you, dog. My guy. Uh. And last up, BK, talking about pizza, you need to hit up Atomic Cowboy in Denver. Their pizza's better than any any here on the East Coast. They were on diners, drive-ins, and dives a while back if you want to see the video on YouTube or their website. They have breakfast there, too, under another name, Denver Biscuit Company. Great, jo uh, great joint and great people. Try it out. You won't be disappointed. BK coming through. Appreciate it. I've actually been there for the uh, Denver Biscuit Company. Have you? Been there and had the biscuits. Never... Um, I got to go check out the Atomic Cowboy for the pizza. Wow. You checked out that place? No. On Broadway? It's like an after hours thing? I th I don't know. I think it's eh, I think it's open all the time, but I think cool. it is late hours. Like a speakeasy yes. of pizza? One of those one of those late night, yeah. Mm. joints. I like it. Um so that wraps up the YouTube comments for this week, man. A couple things we didn't really get into, just didn't have enough time, but uh show rolls on. We're back. Two shows a week. We'll hit you with it on uh Friday on the next show. We'll record it Thursday. Um and we will finally have the Patreon tiers yes. up and active and ready to go. Links in the description, Thank ready for you guys to go. And then uh, merch is going to follow that. That'll be the next step, man. So we're slowly getting the shit rolling, knocking it out. And uh, I'm really excited. I'm feeling good to be back at the cast. I feel, uh, um, I feel rejuvenated, mm. refreshed from the trip. That, that trip, dude, spending some time on the open road really clears your mind, man. Yeah. Makes you feel, I feel good. No. I feel really good going into the week. Anything more you guys want to hit on before we leave? No? Good to go. Good to go. Uh, look out for the uh, YouTube video Dollar and I are going to drop. That'll be available probably later today or tomorrow. And uh, as always, we will see you fools Friday.